Commissioner Wendell. I see. I, I can't hear you. Okay. He's present. Commissioner Lobeo. Here. Commissioner Work. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Here. Chairman Gentry. Here. Mayor Kearns. Here. Councilman Pizzero. Here. Fire Chief Eisenhatcher is excused. Director Boshane. Here. City Attorney Kazam. Here. Consultant Kelly. Here. That concludes roll call. Thank you, Megan. Um, anyone have any additions or corrections to the minutes from the October 21st meeting? Uh, no comments. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Oh, second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Those not in favor say nay. Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Um, uh, in move on to uh, administer the oath. Anyone who think who will be speaking tonight, uh, please raise your right hand. Be after me. You swear to tell the whole tr truth and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. I do. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll just before we go into the uh, uh, the business of the of the evening, just I'll recap the the meeting flow. Um, applicant will pre present the case. Staff will present the report. Uh, commission members, ex officio members, uh, at that time will will make comments, ask questions of the applicant. Uh, this is where I make note that Councilman Panzera has recused himself from the proceedings this evening. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, after that, adjacent property owners of legal standing will, who have expressed an interest in addressing the commission will have three minutes uh, each to make their comments. And then the board will discuss the case and make any final recommendations after that. Please note, applicants, guests, and those providing public comments will be muted until it's their time to speak. At which time you'll be asked to unmute themselves by clicking the red microphone icons. Anyone who's not a board member, please provide your name and street address for speaking. All right, on to old business. It's PC case number 10 2019. Um, this will be our, I believe, fifth, fourth time, fifth time hearing this uh, address at uh, 1229 through 1237 Grandview Avenue, Crosley Development. I'm looking at a major site plan review, including uh, potential conditional use, uh, variance request for height and parking, uh, demolition consult, and the, uh, and I believe that's it, all, uh, to uh, uh, lot, a lot of consultation as well. Um, Ryan, if you're going to be kicking things off, I'll let you go ahead. Can you hear me? Good. Alrighty. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for having us back. My name, uh, for those of us joining us for the first time, is Ryan Crosley. I'm a resident of 1260 Cambridge Boulevard in Marble Cliff. I am uh, a real estate attorney here in town and a principal in this uh, development proposal. I'm joined here uh, behind me uh, by uh, with my father, Craig Crosley. Uh, Mark. Ford and his team, uh, our team of architects, uh, Mark Ford and Rob McGinnis, uh, and uh, Dave, David Bream, uh, architect as well. Um, as, uh, and good evening, Mr. Chairman and Planning Commission members, uh, Ms. Mayor, uh, Council Member, neighbors, friends. Uh, as Chairman Gentry said, this is our fourth uh, formal presentation. Uh, to this board, we have uh, we've spent the better part of of eighteen months, uh, plus or minus, on uh, on this site and on this proposal and and on these plans. We've come before you 
This is the fourth fourth time, uh, and each time we've made significant changes and compromises uh, of trying to make this better. And, and we feel that tonight, uh, the plan that we are presenting is the best plan uh, for 1229, 1237 uh, Grandview Avenue. Uh, we feel that it's the best plan for this site, uh, for our community. Uh, it is uh, the only plan uh, that we've been able to come up with that meets the city's vision, the city's code and law, uh, which is the Grandview Avenue overlay, which was enacted in 2007, uh, nearly 13 years before we bought the site. Uh, and the commercial zoning, which was put in place in 1998. Um, so we we bought uh, both of these par parcels uh, in reliance on that commercial zoning, uh, which has been in place for 22 years, and in reliance on the vision of the overlay. And, and as we'll get into tonight, uh, the overlay, 1151.07, uh, is uh, has has requirements uh, and, and expectations uh, that make this a very challenging site. Uh, any site uh, up and down. Uh, and by the way, the overlay encompasses uh, the properties on the east and west side of Grandview Avenue between first and third, and a, and a couple additional parcels uh, on the north side of First Avenue on, on the west side of Grandview Avenue. Um, so th th this overlay ordinance uh, was, was very specifically in 2007 put in place uh, after uh, uh, nearly two years of, of public input and debate, my understanding uh, from reading uh, the council minutes over those years, um, and, and was really just a thoughtful plan anticipating the redevelopment or revitalization of Grandview Avenue, uh, really after 1200 Grandview had been approved in 2005 and, and another four-story project had been approved uh, at the corner of Haynes and Grandview Avenue. Uh, so our, our city leaders uh, in, in 2007 uh, were looking for a coordinated effort uh, to increase that vitality, to increase the density and mass of the structures uh, on either side of Grandview Avenue, uh, to increase the activity, to increase the pedestrian flow, to uh, work on safety measures uh, up and down uh, the avenue uh, with, with cars going in and out of driveways and pedestrian sidewalks. And so, uh, as you all know, there's eight pages of, of stipulations and requirements and vision. And, and as you'll hear tonight, uh, what we've been up to over the last 18 months is really checking every single box of the requirements of that overlay. And uh, we're thankful uh, for the staff report, uh, which uh, summarized and, and uh, noted uh, the totality of that compliance and in support of approval of our project tonight. Um, so um, after, um, you know, all of that work, um, you know, it, it, there's, the, there, at each of these meetings, and we were again before you in November of 2019 and in, in June of 2020 and in October, uh, we also met uh, privately in the backyards of the properties uh, with the neighbors over three separate sessions in August. Um, so this being really the fifth time uh, for, for public input, we, we've gotten a lot, a lot of ideas, a lot of them good, a lot of them not feasible. Um, but but this plan is really a, a quality presentation, and I'll let Mark go through the plans and the changes since our last meeting. Um, but m maybe before I do that, I'd like to, uh, it was suggested to me by uh, city staff that I review the comments that we heard at the October 21st meeting, and uh, you know, really my understanding of those comments and a summary of of our response or our action or, or explanation uh, as to how we, we responded to uh, each of your uh, thoughtful comments. So if I, if I could just take five minutes, I'll, I'll go quickly. Um, and I, um, I, I did provide this report um, to the city. I don't think it was not a part of our application, um, but again, these are, these are my words and my interpretation of what was said. So if, if, if you think I'm misunderstanding something, please, uh, please correct me um, or, or let me know. Um, but there, there were, um, and the meeting started with with the prior staff report, uh, which uh, that report did not recommend approval given certain conditions that we needed to comply with. As you'll note in the most current staff report, we we are now in compliance uh, with all of the items that were noted in the last staff report. Uh, and and just to summarize a couple of those, I'm, I'm sure staff will go through their report. Um, but um, uh, the, the 
uh, the emphasis on a three-story building uh, with the with the fourth story pushed back was appreciated. Um, there were comments about the rooftop material, which we've addressed. There were comments about building penetrations and lighting materials and glass materials, all of which we've addressed on the plans. Um, there was a discussion about height, which we'll get into. Uh, there was a comment uh, about parking uh, space sizes, uh, which I'm happy to address, and we, and we do address on some of the plans. Um, so. Uh, just from, from the staff um, report again, I think we we are in compliance with all of those comments. Um, I, I'll move on to uh, Planning Commission member uh, Sarah Kelly's comments. And um, Ms. Kelly, we, we heard from you that you appreciated um, our pushing back of the fourth story. And we went back to the drawing board and, and looked at that to see if we, we could push back the fourth story even further. Um, but we we balanced those comments with Mr. Wandell's comments, who asked us to move the fourth story all the way to the street. And so, um, trying to reconcile uh, the differences of of opinion, uh, we feel that the current placement of the fourth story really balances uh, the best of both worlds. Our desire was based on on other feedback that this really try to speak to the street and to the neighbors at the rear as a three story building. And so we think that the current placement of the fourth story, and I'll let Mark get into that, but we've, we, we, through those uh, discussions, we moved the stairwell and the elevator so they are, they are less prominent and less visible. Uh, so the building, we think, speaks even more to, to the three-story um, front. And uh, we, um, we made some other changes on the fourth floor uh, to, to make that special, but... Um, the, the other things um, that, that we heard, um, Sarah, you asked us about the ceiling, uh, floor to ceiling heights uh, at nine feet and whether or not we could we could bring those down. And you know, through, through our, our market research uh, in, in looking at, at buyer trends and builder trends, the expectation in the market today is really uh, of a nine foot ceiling uh, in a residential unit. And we looked at the retail on the first floor to see if we could shrink that, but we we're already, uh, as noted in the staff report, at 15 feet, uh, which, which is really it's, it's a reasonable uh, height for a commercial space, but it's not it's not overly tall. Um, so putting 15 and nine and nine uh, and nine together, um, we really feel that we've we've shrunk the building. By the way, between the uh, October. Um, meeting and today the building height is a foot lower um, than it was we're, we're um, our third story uh, at the top uh, is 38 feet eight inches and at the top of the fourth story is 48 eight inches um, we also did some things which I'll get into uh, uh, with the, the parapet walls and the railings uh, which helped adjust that height uh, um, which which was your next point, um, Sarah, about about the parapet, and Mark will get into those changes. Um, but we were able uh, to reduce the appearance uh, of of those parapet walls while still accounting for a safety railing uh, and and um, really screening it at at the rear for the mechanicals. Um, and, and Sarah, finally, you asked us uh, to point to some similar buildings uh, that 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 we've seen or that inspire us or that that provide the scale and, and massing and or uh, transition uh, that um, it could help you get comfortable um, with the mass and impact of this building. And um, you know, we would draw your attention. I could have, uh, I could share some pictures, um, but we would draw your attention to a couple of buildings. Uh, certainly in Bexley, there's the Gramercy on Main Street um, that uh, is, is a very high quality building. It's actually designed by, by Mark Ford as well. Uh, but has a, has a two-story building, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I think it's a one-and-a-half-story building next to it. Uh, there's another building um, in Bexley that we have a picture of um, that has uh, four stories next to a two-story um, there. But you know, really, really, we don't need to leave Grandview um, to appreciate uh, the, the scale and mass of this building and how it's going to uh, relate to the context. The, uh, the, the Masonic building, which is where Mark Ford's office is located, at the corner of First and Grandview uh, is, is nearly 40 feet tall and, and, and we're two parcels away. Uh, the strip is bookended uh, by the five-story building at the corner of Third and 1200 Grandview Avenue directly across the street from us uh, is, is built uh, at, a, at a height at the top uh, of the mechanical penthouse of, of 48 
feet, nine inches. Um, the Deo Davis Funeral Home at 1580 West First, uh, which is under construction right now, um, is in a C2 district, but not within an overlay, uh, is approved at 50 feet. So um, I, don't, I don't know if that answers your question, um, but um, we, we also, um, earlier this year, um, pre-COVID, uh, took a trip to, to Nashville, Tennessee, and, and visited Franklin, Tennessee, which is a proud uh, historic community, uh, not dissimilar uh, from, from the history and heritage in Grandview, uh, but that town is centered around a circle, uh, with Civil War monuments, and around the circle are uh, three and four story buildings, and around those buildings are, are million dollar homes. Um, and it's, it's really a delightful presentation of, 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 of how uh, this type of, of infill and density uh, can work with, with surrounding properties. Um, and, uh, you know, finally getting back to Grandview, um, on third and further on Grandview Avenue, and I, and I appreciate that that's, that is Columbus, but uh, you know, those sites do bookend our streets. There's a property um, on third in between Broadview and Grandview on the north side uh, that, that is a four-story building with the top story stepped back, and uh, that, that sort of gives an indication of, 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 what, of how not impactful that four-story uh, can be if, if presented right and done right. Um, and then finally, the, the Windsor building, the Wagenbrenner building on the east, side of Grandview is four stories. So um, we, uh, in, in balancing all of the overlay requirements um, and um, you know, the, the site challenges um, you know, and, and really the, 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 um, the extensive eight pages of the overlay um, you know, is where we end up at, at, the, at the, the four story building or the three and a half story building. Um, Sarah, the, those were the, the main four comments that, that I had noted for you. Um, I'll move on to, to Mr. Uh, Labeo's uh, comments that we heard. Um, Eric, you asked us about our parking counts, and I, I believe our plans now clarify, but we have 47 parking spaces on site. Uh, 16 of those are, are mechanical lifts. Uh, we have, through an easement agreement with Mr. Myers, uh, agreed to redo his parking lot and access, and uh, he will have 12 parking spaces. Uh, he has nine today, so he will pick up three additional spaces. And he's been gracious enough through our easement agreement uh, to grant us two of those spaces uh, to use on a first come first serve basis, 24-7, uh, 365. And then on nights and weekends when his business is closed, but, but there might be guests in our building, he's, he's uh, provided nine additional spaces for us to use. Um, so really a, a fantastic cooperative agreement between our parcels. Um, and uh, really we, we are self-parked with no parking variants, uh, Eric, and, and really have nine additional extra spaces, nights and weekends, two additional at all times. Uh, we also create a couple extra on-street uh, parking spaces uh, in addition. Uh, Eric, you asked us if, um, if we could look at and increase the retail space, uh, whether or not there, there was any more square footage to be picked up there. And we looked at that. Um, we, we do achieve a 40-foot uh, depth of the commercial space, which is uh, required by the overlay. Uh, we, we're very comfortable with the, the, the 2250 range for a commercial tenant that, that will attract uh, a, a, a wide net of possible users um, for that space. And, and we think it really is a sweet spot. Um, and, and quite frankly, um, and we, we looked at it increasing in the back and we really just, given the site constraints and the parking requirements, um, don't have additional land, uh, real estate to, to make that space any bigger. Um, but we did look at it. Um, you asked us about stormwater, and, and we confirmed that that our, our design um, should be able to be engineered uh, in a manner that accounts for stormwater. Um, and, and finally, um, you asked uh, similar to uh, Ms. Kelly's comments about uh, the height along Grandview Avenue. And, uh, and, and the overlay and the transition between properties. And um, you'll see in the staff report, uh, there's a very nice exhibit that um, sort of takes a step into the future and uh, shows, shows what this might look like uh, with, with our 38 foot or 48 foot building uh, adjacent to uh, the Myers parcel and the Fort Hoffer um, parcel. And, and it's, um, you know, again, bookended by a, a 40 foot building on the left. and um, we really think uh, not only uh, not not inappropriate, but but very appropriate. Um, so, Eric, those those were um, 
those were the comments that we heard from you. Um, Mr. Wandel, um, your, um, your, your first point to us was to try to make the fourth floor more special. Um, and and um, we, <laughs> I think I drove Mark crazy. Uh, we we flip-flopped it around, we moved it forward, we changed the material several different times. Uh, we, we think we have uh, we have now uh, achieved a proper balance of, of making it special. You know, one of the challenges of making it too special is that then it sticks out like a sore thumb. And our whole desire here is is to um, not have that fourth floor uh, be impactful because we've heard from the neighbors they don't want to see it. Um, so we we heard you, um, and and we we think we've uh, we did change the material. I think you'll notice on the exterior of um, of the fourth story. Um, and, and there, there is a, um, a very unique, uh, shared common space on the front of that, um, which, uh, Mark will get into is, is, uh, steps back, but, um, we, we think that's special as well. That's for use of, but by the entire building. Um, but, uh, again, balancing your comments with Ms. Kelly's, um, we, we think we've shifted that, that fourth floor to, to now the proper point, uh, of, of where it's. Um, not going to impact uh, Grandview Avenue elevation, but also not going to impact uh, the residential homes in the rear. Um, Mr. Wandel, you said you have no con you have no concern about a four-story building, um, and and we had a discussion about um, the, the east side of the street being urban and and the west side. Uh, you know, being more suburban and, and trying to find that proper balance. Again, we think we have. Um, you asked us um, about Mr. Forthofer's parcel and um, you know, what, what, what could we do uh, to integrate our parcel with his. Um, we did look at that. Uh, I did contact Mr. Forthofer again. I think it's been more than 20 times. Uh, he, he, as we've talked about, is not interested uh, in selling right now at a market price, but um, we do feel that with our with our parking arrangement that we've accommodated for, uh, that in the event that that parcel is redeveloped, and as we've talked about it, it it probably cannot be redeveloped um, to to much bigger of a building than exists today. That that lot is smaller, um, e even if we create parking for that lot, uh, the, the building that that would be built would probably be similar in scale, uh, you know, potentially a couple stories, um, but would not. Um, you know, not have the same entrance a, a, as our building likely, but uh, could certainly um, be built in, in a way that looks like uh, you know, somewhat of a continuation uh, and could certainly utilize the parking uh, that we will create on that lot uh, you know, for that parcel through that easement agreement. Um, finally, uh, well, not finally, but uh, additionally, Mr. Wandel, you asked us about the second story uh, and whether or not that space could be used uh, for office space uh, officer retail uh, at this point or some point in the future. And, and we looked at that. We think with the configuration of the stairs and the elevator, uh, that certainly that space could be, uh, who, who knows the vision in 20, 30 years. Uh, but certainly if, if uh, a, certainly if a user wanted to integrate that second uh, story front parcel, they could do so. Um, we think uh to today, in, in given the market conditions and the market outlook uh, for, for the next five, 10 years, uh, that, that the, uh, the best, best, the highest and best use of that space today uh, is residential. And so that's what we've shown on our plans, but I, I don't think the, the possibility is foreclosed. Uh, it certainly is not um, making that office space. Um, finally, your comment, uh, Mr. Wandel, about uh, symmetry and architecture and, and uh, Enhancing the enhancements and uh, making the building special, and uh, part of the reason that we did not make the meeting uh, last month and it took us 60 days is because uh, uh, Mark and Rob and their team uh, were working on making the exterior uh, more extraordinary, more special. Um, and I'll let them speak. Uh, they made uh, some nice enhancements to the entry of the building and the stairwell. Um, to the symmetry uh, that, that you spoke about. Um, that, that was Mr. Wandel, the last comment that I um, that I wrote down uh, summarizing your thoughts. I'll move on um, to Ms. Rourke's comments. Um, 
you asked us to confirm the noise level of the parking lifts. Um, and and um, we did so with, with two separate manufacturers. Uh, the first manufacturer who we've been working with all along, Parkmatic, uh, did confirm for us that the lifts are uh, 55 to 60 decibels, uh, which again is about uh, the noise of a dishwasher. I contacted another manufacturer uh, who sent me a video of their lift uh, with a noise meter and uh, that lift measured 77 decibels, uh, which is about a vacuum cleaner. Um, so we're pretty, we're pretty confident that these lifts um, are, are not gonna be um, creating any noise, noise pollution as has been suggested. Um, but um, that hopefully answers your question there. Um, your, your next point, um, Ms. Rourke, was about the, the mass and size of the building and um, you know, conforming to the other buildings around us and to the residential around us. And uh, I, we think, and, and the staff, staff report uh, you know, suggests that, that we've, we've really um, done everything we can uh, within the confines of the of the site and, and the significant requirements of the overlay um, to, to try to make sure that transition um, is not unnatural. And um, you know, we're pretty confident, you know, given the four-sided architecture and all the features of the building and the glass and the railings and uh, all, all of the little things that, that Mark has added on uh, recently, um, you know, and the movement of the building in and out, um, you know, we're, we're pretty proud of, of the presentation and, and the building um, as, it, as it sits today. Um, Ms. Rourke, you asked us um, at the last meeting what our hardship is um, for for needing uh, needing a variance or variances, and um, I, I think I think we tried to answer your question at the last meeting. But it, it, it's my understanding a hardship is is not a condition uh, of approval uh, before this board. I understand it's a standard uh, before the BZA, um, but but my understanding is. Um, and it's it's not here, um, and, and hopefully I tried to answer your question there um, at the last meeting. Uh, finally, you you asked about parking size and confirming current parking trends, and whether or not our uh, uh, parking um, stalls were of adequate size. And, and um, we number one, we believe that they are. Uh, number two, uh, they are um, large enough to accommodate our lifts. Um, number three, uh, the spaces that we are proposing are a foot wider than the spaces that have been approved in the garages at Grandview Yard, uh, which are eight feet um, and uh, admittedly narrow, um, but we are a foot wider uh, than those spaces. Um, and then finally, we confirmed that, you know, that there is, it's not the entire segment of the automotive market, but there is a large segment of the automotive market that is moving uh, to more efficient vehicles, uh, which are by their nature smaller. So, um, you know, not, not to say that we uh, won't have an interested buyer with a two-ton truck, but um, we probably won't. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably, um, you know, given the size of our, our units and uh, one and two bedroom units, um, you know, we, we anticipate that, uh, that folks' cars will, will be parallel to their choice of, of housing, which is also smaller. Um, mo moving on to Chairman Gentry's, Gentry's uh, comments, Mr. Gentry, um, you uh, pointed out that our easement agreement with Mr. Myers uh, is is a really significant uh, agreement, and uh, and we we agree. Uh, Mr. Myers has occupied, or his family has occupied that site uh, as, as their real estate business since 1972, and and uh, since 1972, his access has been a six foot wide driveway uh, at the south side of, of his um, site. And uh, as we know, most cars are wider than six feet. So uh, he, he has a challenge uh, and his uh, employees and clients have a challenge getting into the back of the site. He only has nine parking spaces back there, which he has indicated to us are not enough. Um, so he, he's really excited. And I think you saw his, his letter of support adamant support uh, for this project um, uh, with us granting him an easement to use our new two-lane driveway and creating the 12 parking spaces um, for his parcel. So um, thank you. We acknowledge, uh, and, and Mr. Myers, I'm sure, would uh, would smile, but uh, I think I think he and I corresponded about 20 times as well. Um, 
before we uh, we finally agreed that this was a, a good agreement. So, um, you know, since 1972, these these three parcels have not been connected really since since the early 1900s since these houses were built. So, uh, it really is it really is a, a fantastic opportunity. That agreement with Mr. Myers also eliminates an additional curb cut, uh, which which will only promote further safe operation of vehicles and pedestrian traffic uh, on the strip with one addition, one less curb cut, uh, you know, one less driveway of cars backing uh, backing up across the sidewalk or pulling in across the sidewalk. Um, Mr. Gentry, you asked us about uh, our trash and logistics. Uh, as I think you all know, uh, is really a major concession uh, to the to the residential neighbors behind us. We have we have offered to move our dumpster into our building. And, and, uh, and we scratched our heads as to whether or not this was a smart decision because it's a very costly decision. Um, but we agree it's, it's, it's the right offer. Um, it's the right thing to do. Uh, by the way, no one else up and down Grandview uh, has a dumpster inside of their building. They're all uh, you know, at the back of their sites. And, and as we heard, uh, there's a rodent problem and a smell problem. Uh, we, we won't be creating uh, or adding to that that problem. The dumpster is in our building. I spoke with two separate uh, trash companies and um, Rumpke and Boren Brothers. Uh, both of them were um, had no issues with, with the location of the dumpster, uh, the mechanisms for servicing it. Uh, they indicated that they would pull up and, and enter our building, wheel it out, empty it, and, and, uh, and leave. So um, we, we really think that that's a nice win-win uh, um, well, lose for us, win for the neighbors. <laughs> um, but but it will it will be a nice amenity for our building, and that's that's something that we can be proud of. Um, the um, finally, uh, Mr. Gentry, you you opined that that the overlay uh, provides a very narrow target uh, to hit, especially uh, for a site of our size, and and that you were thinking long and hard uh, about the height of this proposal, and. Um, you know, as I said, we have lowered the building a foot. Uh, we think that that's that's really significant. We, we've uh, we've cut the fourth floor uh, down to four units in half um, since, since our prior presentations. Um, but really, what what I'd like to say about the height and and there really is not enough uh, or has not been enough discussion uh, about the height under the overlay. And you know, it, it's my opinion uh, and interpretation of the city law as a real estate attorney who, who looks at these things every day that the overlay, which again uh, was put in place after a couple years of public debate and plenty of attorneys and architects and experts uh, looking at this code, very specifically, very, very specifically says that any project within the overlay needs to achieve a minimum 30 foot height. It needs to achieve a minimum 30 foot height. So that, that's our starting point is we had to build a building that was that was no shorter than 30 feet. And then and then putting into the bucket all of the other requirements uh, of the overlay and not to mention that uh, you know, the, the project needs to be profitable. Um, so you know we we got to three and a half stories or, or as Mr. Wandel would say well, four stories. Um, and so um, you know, but, but but again, the height standard for our project is a minimum of 30 feet. The overlay is, is silent with respect to a number as to the maximum, but it is very loud and assertive and aggressive and explicit with respect to the requirement that we have a vertical mix of buildings, density, massing. It's the whole vision of the overlay. It's not my vision, it's your vision as the city. And and we're just here executing it, but um, you know there's 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 a lot of talk uh, in the community about the 35 foot C2 standard and uh, how that's the base zoning and the height and the overlay has a conflict with the base zoning because you, you can't have every building on Grandview Avenue be between 30 and 35 feet and still achieve the vision of the overlay which asks for a diversity and variety of buildings and heights and masses. So you know, what that tells me, interpreting the two codes, is that the minimum height is 30 feet. That's what we need to achieve. 
the maximum height is to be approved at the discretion of this board. And if you determine that the max maximum height is 35 feet, that that's your decision and your discretion. But uh, you know, I, I, I would suggest to you that uh, you know, a reasonable tolerance to, to 38.8 or 48.8 you know, in light of 1200 Grandview, which is which is 49 feet, in light of 1580 West First, which is 50 feet, in light of the, the, the Masonic building, which is 40 feet, in light of the five-story building at the other end of, of the corner, which bookends the street, given all of that precedent and the direction from city council as approved in, in 2007, uh, you know, what, one can only envision a more dense, taller uh, strip with, with a variety of buildings. And um, you know, so you know, I, I, would, I would make one other point, um, you know, just uh, to, to really overemphasize our understanding of the C2 zoning code. If this parcel were on First Avenue and zoned commercial C2 and not within the Grandview Avenue overlay, you know, i.e. 1580 West First, zoned commercial C2 adjacent to residential, we would concede that the maximum height without a variance allowed is 35 feet. We would concede that point. But this is not that site. We are within the overlay where there's the city envisions and dictates a, a, a taller building with a minimum of 30 feet. So um, I, not to belabor the point, but we, we just, the, the interplay between the 30 and 35 feet, between the, the, the 30 foot minimum of the overlay and the 35 feet of the C2, uh, there's a conflict there within in the city code. And the only reasonable legal uh, interpretation between those two codes is, is as I said, a, a standard of a minimum 30 feet with the maximum to be determined you know, by the discretion of this board. Um, and you know, as the staff report points out, we, we think that, that we, we've achieved that balance and, and you know, we, we'd be hopeful um, that, that you agree. Um, but Mr. Gentry, that was the last point that I wrote down um, from your comments um, from the last meeting. Um, finally, Mayor Kearns, uh, you had a couple of comments at the last meeting. Um, the, the consolidation of curb cuts, cross easements, uh, and maximized parking, um, you indicated were all, I think, quote, you know, very fantastic and, and positive. And, and we agree. Uh, you know, we're just, we're, again, we're very excited about the agreement with Mr. Myers. It's a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity uh, for us and for the city and for Mr. Myers uh, to really improve the safety and access of all three parcels and the parking for all three parcels. And, and as I'll get into the loading zone that we've proposed on the street and, and recognizing that that is a technical variance because the overlay requires that we have an on-site loading zone and ours is off-site. Uh, but really, uh, we believe it's a reasonable request because the movie theater and the barbershop and Mr. Forthoff or Mr. Myers and the occupants of our building are all going to benefit from using it from using that loading zone, whether it's a, an Uber Eats driver or a UPS driver or Amazon, whoever it is, uh, that's really going to solve a current problem on Grandview Avenue, those those delivery drivers currently have nowhere to park. Um, so that um, that concludes my notes on your comments from the last meeting. Um, I, I have a summary of of how that all of that translated into plan changes, but I think I'm going to let Mark uh, review uh, the plans so he can do it more eloquently than I can, uh, and he's the architect. <laughs> Don't have that expertise, so um, I'll let Mark review um, really how all of those comments then translated uh, into the further improvements and refinements that we've made. Uh, thank you. Good evening. My name is Mark Ford, uh, Ford and Associates Architects at 1500 West First Avenue. I appreciate your consideration for this application tonight, and uh, I really want to compliment Ryan on what I. I uh, believe was just a very thorough, thoughtful um, presentation of the, the history of the project and the level of detail that he's researched. And that not only, you know, from trash removal to, uh, you know, understanding um, and trying to address each of the concerns that have been raised by this board and, and the neighbors. Um, I thought that was extraordinarily well done. Um, <clears throat> so regarding the building itself, uh, um, I was unable to to attend the last uh, meeting of this group. Uh, however, I did get a lot of feedback from all the fellows here in the room, uh, and uh, we 
we collectively uh, step back and try to assess, assess, um, assess where uh, where we believe that um, we could improve this this design. And so what we did is um, really rethought the whole front elevation along <clears throat> along Grandview Avenue, and and um, as well as some of the plan changes then that reflect. You know what happens inside the building happened to the exterior of the building in terms of how it's uh, represented on the plan. So I don't know. Uh, I don't have control of the Charlie. I guess if I could have you um, start to um, put up maybe the site plan. Okay. And I know this is this is going to be a you know, Ronnie went through. You're able to share if you have your 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 PDF. If you oh, I'm sorry. the same screen with the uh, WebEx, there, okay. I, okay. It, there's a file at it and share. If you can open your PDF, you can share it. Okay, give us a moment, please. Sure, sure. Let's go share. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you have to open it first and then share. Not me. <laughs> but trust me, I'm. Then you just go. Oh, uh oh. Let's go click on that and share. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. I will try not to mess this up too terribly bad. Um, so uh, this is the front elevation uh, looking across from Haynes Avenue. And one of the things that the comments we heard were, you know, the, uh, trying to express on the exterior of the building, the function and the form of what's happening inside the building. Um, you know, we have retail, a commercial space on the ground floor. Uh, that has not changed. Um, but the units on the second and third floor facing Grandview Avenue, there's two units there. And previously, we had the building massing split uh, kind of, in a, well, it was in an asymmetrical uh, configuration. However, the interior of the, the plan was really a symmetrical uh, unit plan. And so what we did is, is based on trying to create more of a formal representation of the interior function of the building, we went to a more symmetrical uh, configuration. Uh, on the uh, front, the front elevation. What and what that did is it created two very nice vertical elements in, in which we set uh, the balcony uh, elements for each of the uh, the four units uh, with the two, you know, second, third, fourth stacked, and allowed for some very nice uh, cut stone detailing, uh, creating a framework around those elements. Um, we also increased the amount of stone on the ground floor level, uh, going with like a uh, with a uh, stone ashlar pattern. With recesses, I think I can use. Yeah, I can point to things here. Uh, with recesses around this, the the uh, storefront openings, we also want with a recessed storefront opening where the door set back. And again, that that may vary depending on how this lease is out. You may you may only have one <clears throat> storefront that's set back. You know, based on if it's a single tenant or multi tenant uses. Uh, probably the biggest change that you you can probably note from the previous um, uh, submittal. As opposed, in addition to the symmetry and the additional stone on the front, uh, is the removal of the large metal, more contemporary element we had at the corner. Uh, again, you know, comments we received or I heard were that you know this was, this was expressing a vertical circulate circulation element, but the circulation element actually wasn't there. It was it was more to the west. So again, trying to be a little more uh, more consistent with the building plan, uh, we made that. Uh, again, brick to turn the corner, similar to what it does on the north east corner of the building. <clears throat> and you can see just a little bit in this view, this is the stair uh, element there that it now actually has natural light into that stair. Uh, that stair is it, it trans, um, you know, uh, transports people from the ground floor up to the upper levels of the building. Uh, so we really scaled down the, uh, the kind of the, the, the contemporary element on the corner here. But what we did do, you know, is we, we wanted to hang on to something a little unique and a little contemporary. So we kept that same metal <clears throat> copper finished panel that we we just 
displayed to you in previous presentations. And we made it uh, an angled entrance piece for the residential unit itself. Uh, you know, you can see we have created offsets in the front plane of the building. You can see the shadow lines here. Again, trying to create compositions of, you know, the various shapes and then the vertical proportions within each one of those compositions. Uh, so those little offsets, I think, are very important and allows us to do a couple of things. It allows us to change materials, creates a nice shadow line. And, you know, again, we can change the parapet height slightly at those, uh, those conditions. So I, all in all, I think, you know, the, the improvements that we made are, are, uh, are, are, are quite nice. Um, you know, a, a level of detail, you know, in the model that we've created, um, you know, we're showing all these joints and all the recesses in the brick and, and the stone. They're, they're, you know, we're, we're investing a lot of money uh, and time and care to try, try to create something of some really beautiful textures and details along the front face of the building. It's one of the things that, that uh, Ryan and his father have kind of challenged us on is they really have said, you know, stated repeatedly this, you know, the level of detail, the level of quality uh, needs to be, um, be needs to be exceptionally high uh, uh, on the uh, front front face of the building. Um, but you know, not to ignore the other sides of the building, we can tear it, can, we continue with a brick on the uh, north, uh, east, north, and southwest corners of the building and the entire face of the west side of the building. Uh, one of the other changes we made <clears throat> by rotating the stair in the elevator, uh, you now uh, will, will not see the elevator overrun. Uh, previously, I know when we had the backyard meeting, we were asked a couple times about what was that little thing sticking out the top of the building right here? And we explained that that was the elevator overrun, uh, not too dissimilar to what you see across the street uh, in, in the building uh, that the students would be facing. And uh, by repositioning that, it allowed us actually to make this corner of this residential unit a little nicer. And as you can see, it, it uh, pushed that overrun further back into the center of the roof, again, making it uh, not, you know, uh, not visible from street level. Um, we also, the front face of the fourth floor uh, is 20 feet, uh, I want to say 20 feet, four inches, I think, 20 feet, eight inches back from the front face of the building. We've also pulled the railing back and you, you'll see on the roof plan or the fourth floor plans that are in your packet, we've pulled this railing back uh, five feet off the, the full perimeter on the south, the east, and the north sides of that roof um, terrace that uh, is for all, for use for all members or, you know, uh, residents of the, of the facility. Um, so again, I, just trying, to, trying to emphasize this three, you know, the three-story edge um, along the uh, Grandview Avenue side of the building. Uh, again, returning the brick, uh, you know, we've got um, corbelled brick details, recessed brick details uh, throughout the entire ground floor level and extend those all the way up uh, to the uh, to the different cornice elements. So, I, you know, I think it's a it's a very handsome uh, traditional uh, traditional design with uh, some interesting contemporary elements uh, kind of introduced to it. Um, so now let me think here. How do I? How do I advance? Just take those forward. Yeah. Usually, oh, you just wheel it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes there's an error there. Okay, thank you. Um, so we kind of had these little backwards, but <clears throat> site plan. I think most of you have seen this uh, several times, but I'll walk through just a few of the changes here very quickly. Uh, as Ryan stated earlier, one of the comments we heard loud and clear was uh, the dumpster position here was was not at all. Um, um, supported by the uh, residents um, to the west. Uh, we moved it into the building. It will be in an enclosed room uh, with a, you know, a, uh, a door uh, that will be accessed, uh, as, as Ryan said, by the private um, trash hauler. Uh, we've also are designating some EV charging stations for uh, electric vehicles in the, uh, in the parking, parking area itself. You can see here the connectivity to the lot to the south, the Myers property with its additional, well, it's 12 spaces. Again, there's nine spaces now. Uh, the head-in parking <clears throat> uh, along the west edge, which would be consistent with the Myers property, and then extension of that fence and landscaping uh, into the Myers property as well, as well coming down. Right now, there's a, I know there's a telephone pole right here. So I park right here every day, and uh, there's a telephone pole here, so we would extend all that down to the end of of this, uh, the Myers property. Um, and then that fence line would come in turn 
as well along the north west corner of the property uh, as well as landscaping and this i believe is an existing tree right here and then in the future you can see the connectivity that would be proposed to the fourth hoffer uh, property to the north and it's proposed how parking can work for that for that piece of property as ryan said park uh curb cut will go away here here the, the myers uh property and then the two residential um, curb cuts that are existently uh, exist right now on the Grandview Avenue would be consolidated into one two-way curb cut uh, just to the north side of Myers. Uh, and then the on-site loading space is, is or off-site loading space that Ryan previously mentioned. Um, whoops. All right, so uh, second floor plan. Uh, well, let me go back to the first. This also shows this is where the stair is. The elevator's been moved. The elevator used to sit about right here, but just by moving it in, my, you know, I'm going to approximate 12 to 14 feet further into the building. It, it will clip the sight lines of the overrun for that. And then you can see this is that that copper material kind of blade wall that we're pulling in to use for the residential lobby uh, here um, to get back to that elevator. Then we have the minimum 40 feet deep. Uh, resident or um, commercial space. Uh, the building itself, I know this came up earlier uh, one night we were walking and looking at the building uh, with some of the, the after the conclusion of one of the neighborhood meetings. Uh, uh, the building itself will align with the front of the fourth hopper. Pro you know, it's it's really kind of almost a build to line. So we're not pushing forward of that. It will be consistent with the uh, facades of the adjacent buildings as well. And I believe it's approximately 16 feet from the back of curb to where the front of the building is. So that's all consistent with um, existing uh, existing structures. Second floor, you can see we have the units, uh, the, the two facing grand view. Here's our elevator and stair core, the window, the window into the stair, our second stair. Again, this hasn't changed a great deal from the previous other than reconfiguring kind of this front facade element right here and then the addition you know the balconies before the balconies were paired together if you recall in the center of the building and we've split them to uh to each unit having its own its own small balcony uh third floor is very you know it's it's, it's stacked um and, and then go back to one of the comments earlier you know we uh this could very easily be converted into office space you know i think the nine foot ceiling is is kind of critical to that for second generation use if it was uh, commercial lease space, um, but I, there's nothing here this uh, that would preclude us from being able to convert this in time, if if needed, into uh, you know if the market changes, it could be used as office space. Um, whoops, I keep spinning the wrong way. Uh, fourth floor. Uh, so again, uh, you can see here the exterior patio, and you can see the setback. Um, there's the railing, the setback from the uh, the north, south, and east edges of the building. You can see this, you can actually see here the plan changes on the front facade where we've kind of created that symmetrical element with the stone uh, cornice in the center of the building. And then as you turn the corner, you can see that stair element that, that connects all four floors uh, here. And that has that glass uh, glass stair on the first, uh, stores, uh, floors one through three. Uh, the other thing that we've done is we've created an offset. We broke the wall plane on the north side of the building by uh, about two feet so that that wall plane, again, I think going back to some of the comments about trying to make the fourth floor level, um, I don't wanna say discontinuous, that's not the right word, right? Well, but you know, separate from the, re the body of the building, uh, that was one of the elements. And it also allowed us then to change the material. As I said earlier, a lot of times when we change plane, we like to change materials. So that created a natural place to make that material change. And on the south side of the units, you can see we pulled these in approximately five feet from that, that exterior wall uh, from the floor below here, again, to offset that mass and then also allow for a material change from the, the floor below. Um, this has been discussed um, in uh, each of the presentations. What we're doing here, as you can see, there's no windows um, on the fourth story facing the residents to the west. Uh, and uh, we've located all the condensing units for the residential units on top of the third floor. One of the things um, in our efforts to reduce the effective height of the building uh, is we've reduced the cornice, or excuse me, the parapet height of this element right here uh, so that 
Uh, before, what we were doing is we had it high enough that we were screening these condensing units with the parapet itself. Well, the concern was, well, it just makes your building look taller. So what we did is we pulled these all closer together. You know, here's the service door to get out to them. And then we have, we're screening them here with the offset, you know, again, further uh, in from the edges of the building. So again, that was another element. And so now uh, that west that west parapet <clears throat> is uh, is at uh, 39 feet. Uh, so uh, you know, again, I, I believe before Robin, correct me if I'm wrong, it was 40, 41 something, 41 four or something like that. So we've dropped it down uh, again uh, in an effort to you know reduce reduce the visual impact of the mass of the building. Uh, here you can see. The straight on elevations and straight on elevations are, are a little tough at times. Um, and uh, but you can see here the symmetry of the uh, east facade, three retail or commercial spaces, our balconies. There's our fourth floor that's set back. Um, you know, one of the things Rob and I were wrestling with is every time you print this out or showing on a different computer screen, the colors come out a little bit different. We're really looking at kind of a gray, a gray green uh, top element and this would be the same metal panels uh, a different color but the same material uh, that we'd be using to here on the ground floor and even on the faces of these balconies uh, and then as we turn the building um, this is on the north side this would be you know fourth fourth hoppers building sits about right here so this is our our north wall we repeat that window proportioning in a brick relief and then we get into the residential units as we progress to the west. And then we have the west or the northwest corner unit, uh, cor corner units uh, on this, this end of the building. So again, and returning that same material from the uh, front of the building around and around. And here you can see that elevator overrun. But what's interesting because, it, you know, again, that's why I say straight on elevations are a little challenging in that because they just flatten everything out. You know, this is actually back quite a ways, but it show, you know it's it shows up as if it's you know front and center of the building. You can see how far back it sits from, you know, the front face of the building. If you're down here, you're not going to see that. Um, here's our west building elevation again, all brick, uh, with the, uh, the the pair of units at the end of the corridor, uh, each of them having their own their own uh, you know French French door and shallow balcony out to the west, and then again you can see the west. Uh, upper level of the building um, does not have any windows out to the west, uh, which is, you know, and quite frankly, in my mind is unfortunate. Um, I think, you know, having windows to the west side of the building would be nice. Um, but it was something that, uh, you know, the, the, con the concern of, of the neighbors from the west of people being on the fourth floor looking down uh, into their, you know, into their properties, um, the decision was to not put any windows up there. And then you can see here, this element is the screen uh, here. You can see it from the side, which would screen those condensing units. So this is the south side, <clears throat> uh, kind of up our driveway. Again, very you know everything's flattened out. Here's our residential entryway with its copper angled wall. Here's our balcony or our excuse me patio area on the fourth floor, and then this is our stair. Again, very 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 true to you know the interior plan is we have a stair here. We want it to be used. And we want it to be an inviting stair to, to be used. And so we're putting glass into that stair uh, so that those residents and people coming up into the building um, are, are invited. You know, it's more of an inviting and usable space. And we're expressing that on the exterior of the building. So again, trying to be very true to the interior function. Uh, here you can see the trash enclosure. And then these, you know, obviously we've lifted the building up. We're not showing all the cars, but there, you know, this is where the parking would be. Uh, here's some just some different views. Uh, again, um, you can see here, this is the fourth, fourth, fourth hyper building, I, sorry, and, uh, and <laughs> our building. Every, every month I go through that same struggle with his name. Um, but you can see here that the, the, the edge of our, our upper floor, the setback on the fourth floor. Again, this came out, one of the things is because it's metal. When we rendered it, the, it, it kind of it washed out the colors from the sun hit. You know, it's just the way the computer reacts to it. Here you can see the stone, is, you know, looks a little beigey. You know, times of the day, it's going to look a lot more white. Um, and it's just the, this, when we inputted the metal, it kind of tricked the computer in making it look white, but it, it will not be white. It will be more of a, a, a gray-green 
uh, metal, you know, kind of more like what you see in the shadow here. Uh, again, the balconies, and you can see here the, the relative um, uh, position of it in the street and, you know, how it is consistent with the massing uh, and the height of, of the, um, of the um, um, building that we're in right down here. Um, and then, uh, you know, as it steps up from the uh, rest of the streetscape and how it aligns in plan with the rest of the street. Whoops. Uh, here's looking, uh, so this would be looking northwest from across the street. Here's our residential entryway, you know, much scaled, scaled down, but still unique. Uh, and then the setback of the fourth floor and then our, our gray uh, metal panels for the third floor. And here you, you really get evidence of how we step this back to five feet to allow us to create a differentiation between the three-story mass of the building and the four-story level. Uh, here is actually looking uh, from about where I park every day, I guess. Um, this would be at the very southwest corner of the Myers property looking. You can see here the trash enclosure. You can see the head-in parking along the west face, the edge of what will be the, you know, the landscape material and that fence line that we're creating. Uh, one of the things, too, why, before I forget, um, you know, when we were meeting in the backyards, that it was very interesting. And the staff report, I think, actually makes mention of this. but. The way that the current houses sit on those lots, they raise up about a foot and a half from the, the sidewalk. And so in trying to marry, marry those up, you know, for accessibility for the cars and then, you know, obviously our finished floor needs to match the front sidewalk. Uh, we believe that all this will be about a foot below the back edge of the site. So we have five feet to kind of do a five to one slope. Um, so this parking will be slightly lower and until we do the final civil engineering, but our approximate, we're gonna approximate it's gonna be between, you know, one or one and a half feet lower than the residences to the, to the west, um, just because we have to, you know, try to match to all the uh, perimeter existing grades. Oops. Uh, and then this is the survey, which, which kind of shows those contour lines where it steps up, you can see there's, a, it's up a foot, another foot. And then it actually kind of dips down a little bit and it comes back up. Uh, as you go from the from east to west from uh, from Grandview Avenue. So that's those are the materials that were provided in your packet. Um, you know, I, I know uh, Ryan has some more comments to make, but I would be glad to answer any questions uh, regarding the design um, as the as the time is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to share a, a different exhibit now. Um, we um, at the at the neighbors and cities uh, request and and to emphasize the point of um, of what we will see um, from every direction. Um, we have prepared. Um, give me a second here. Um, we have prepared uh, sightline exhibits, and I'll let Rob. Uh, from Ford and Associates, uh, scroll through these and introduce uh, and show the different uh, angles from the different parcels. Hello, everyone. My name is Rob McInnes with Ford and Associates Architects. Um, I'm here working with Ryan and uh, under Mark here. Uh, and one thing that we felt was really important uh, to bring to this presentation was to show all the views and the properly model uh, to our best ability. Uh, all the, the neighbors to the west along Broadview Avenue. And so the, these next nine views, um, what we did is we took a survey uh, information that we could find. Um, we modeled all the existing homes and then uh, we threw it in our 3D program and, um, to show that as accurately as really humanly possible at this point, um, what everyone will see this uh, ultimately what this what we're proposing today so with this view this is the furthest south at uh, 1226 um, in all these views what I did is I added a red line which shows the 35 foot mark you can see here and then our new parapet height which was brought down now to the 39 feet so I'll just scroll through um, as we we go um, from south to north along Broadview Avenue. 
1236. And all of these views um, were taken with your back up against the, uh, the, the owner's home. So these two views here are if you're standing on their driveway. Um, and as you can see, uh, you can see the fourth floor here, but there, there are no windows and it's pretty, it's a pretty minimal impact. It's um, our goal uh, as we continue to move north. This is one, two, four, zero, the Bulmer um, standing in their driveway. Uh, one, two, four, two, uh, the ship residence. Um, so again, this red line is not, this is just uh, to represent the 35 foot mark. And then we are four feet above that with the parapet up here. And then you can see a thin sliver of the fourth level here. Now, the next thing that I want, wanted to show that I thought was important was the view from the second level. So this is taken at, at an eye level of roughly 15 feet as if you were standing out your second floor bedroom. So um, you will see more of the fourth floor, obviously, but again, we, we wanted to, um, to try and at least give a better idea. There are windows, no one's gonna be occupying the space looking down from the fourth floor. It's just purely a roof line. And then lastly, the, um, I think, I believe I have two more. This is one, two, five, four. Um, and then I'm back down at grade. This is one, two, six, zero, the King, uh, King perspective. Um, this is the neighbor who's right behind the uh, movie theater. And what I did as well is I removed all of the existing uh, trees because um, I know that there's some really nice trees and pretty well-developed trees that actually help block this as well. But this this is the absolute worst case scenario. Um, so I, I hope that this puts um, uh, some of your concerns, at least, I don't want to say at ease, but it gives as accurate a view of what you can, of, of what we can possibly show at this time. Um, and then the last two here, we have, this is standing um, at the intersection of Granby Avenue and First. And what we're, we're trying to show is how this building, we feel, does a pretty nice job of actually fitting in with the context of what's going on at First. So this is the 40-foot the, the building, the Masonic building. And then um, you can't see it here, but where my cursor is, is um, the, uh, yeah, the 1200, um, that condominium with the 50-foot. Um, um, fourth floor penthouse penthouse above, um, and then lastly, this um, this is a shadow study that I did um, showing the summer solstice, the spring, fall equinox, and then also the winter solstice <clears throat> at uh, early morning, just to show the absolute worst case scenario during the summer months where our shadow from the pro from our building. Uh, will hit the properties immediately to the west, um, where it it will not touch the building. And then in the spring and fall, um, the shadow lines that come up here, you'll see that your garage is in shadow, but it won't touch your house. And then uh, same thing with the winter time. And then obviously, as we move uh, at at noon, it it won't have an impact at all. And then uh, as we move on to sunset. Um, uh, all the shadow lines would be all along Granby Avenue. Um, so if you have any other questions about these sight lines, um, yep. I think it's important to report the Yeah, so, so with these, these three shadow studies here, this is the 4 p.m., uh, 5 p.m. and 6 p.m at summer, spring, and winter. And what you're seeing, uh, the dark shadow lines, is actually from the, the homes on the west. Um, what I tried to show is how our shadow will go over top of Grandview Avenue, but it will not have any impact at all on the properties to the west. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I just, um, to dovetail off of uh, so, some of the views, 
uh, and and the neighbor concerns. Um, just wanted to make a couple comments. Um, we have since we started this project last November uh, made significant uh, concessions, but also significant improvements. I I, I hope that uh, everyone acknowledges. Certainly, the staff report acknowledges that we've uh, we've made great strides and great improvements. And I think this is the best. Uh, plan today um, of any of the other ones that we we uh, proposed, and, and we feel that we have overturned every every stone uh, in looking looking for options. But uh, you know, j just as a reminder of of the concessions that we have made to try to um, you know garner um, either the support of the neighbors uh, or to um, really just. Uh, um, let me go back here for a second. Uh, the plan's back up. Um, really, just uh, you know, to to try to alleviate the concerns uh, because we we appreciate that that change is different, um, but we're we're trying to, as you can see, with some pretty sophisticated technology and 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 the best architects in town. Um, you know, we're trying to show realistic uh, scenarios and. Um, this is not, um, you know, there's a lot of emotion here um, from from some folks in the community and or the neighbors directly behind us. And, and what we're trying to show you are, um, you know, uh, real viewpoints. But but since we've started this project, we, we've moved the rear of the building 25 feet away from the neighbors and completely out of the setback. We've moved the dumpster into our building. We've completely self-parked. We've eliminated two curb cuts. We've created extra parking spaces on Myers site and on the street. Uh, we've offered a very significant fence and landscape buffer. Uh, you know, even as even as the neighbors uh, continue to object to the proposal, you know, we we continue um, to, to make these concessions and offers um, to to try to to try to alleviate. I mean, because what we all have to appreciate is that uh, each one of these uh, four or six neighbors behind us, each one of them. Uh, purchased their homes after the overlay was put in place uh, and after these properties were commercially zoned. Uh, a few of them have admitted to us that they had no idea that the two existing homes are zoned commercial uh, or are within an overlay. Uh, you know, that's unfortunate um, to, to make that size of an investment without that, that understanding, but uh, on, the, on, the, on the converse, we, our family, my family, made a significant investment in these two parcels uh, after having done our due diligence, after having met with city officials, after having read the applicable codes, uh, then we decided to close and purchase uh, these properties. Um, and and so, you know, it's 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 unfortunate that um, that there's um, that there's not a little more buy-in because these properties, if the city decides to honor its code and its vision, these properties will be redeveloped. Uh, that was the whole point of the overlay. And the rezoning in '98 and the overlay in 2007. These properties will be redeveloped, um, you know, as the staff report shares, and as as we've uh, pointed out, they can't be redeveloped into a 35 foot building. And and that's what uh, the, the neighbors behind us, uh, Mr. Ulmer, the Ships, uh, the the Homans, the, the Callas, uh, the Marias, you know, what they keep telling us is take the building down to 35 feet, and we won't have any objections. And what we're what we're telling you, and what we're sharing with you is, there is no project that exists at exactly 35 feet. Uh, these will remain residential houses forever, and we might as well just get rid of the overlay. Uh, it, it'll never be enacted, and these sites will never be redeveloped. There, there is no uh, unless unless a charity comes along um, or a big donation. These properties cannot economically uh, be redeveloped into a 35 foot project. We, we have studied this uh, for over 18 months uh, with, with two sets of, of architectural teams. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I just wanted to review the concessions that we've made along the way. Uh, the height of the building, we've reduced the fourth floor. We only have four units up there. Um, we, we have provided for a loading zone. Um, and, and I'll just, um, you know, I'll, I'll address two more points um, and, and then I'll conclude here. Um, but, there was a significant um, and impressive uh, marketing campaign uh, put out there by the uh, the four neighbors behind us. 
um, they were really, um, you know, fill in the blank letters that were that were handed out. Um, I was handed one of them. I was forwarded a copy of another. Um, you know, the the, um, the the passion and the emotion uh, in those letters was was very successful in getting a significant volume of uh, of robo form letters submitted. And um, you know, the, the problem that I have uh, with with the way those letters uh, were procured and submitted is that there were there was a lot of misinformation in the flyers that were handed out um, or that were emailed out. And um, you know, I, I, frankly, if I had received one of those flyers and I knew nothing else and I trusted the statements in those letters, I would have submitted an email in opposition to this project. Uh, but the problem is neither of those flyers or letters that went out, none of them mentioned the words overlay. None of them mentioned the applicable vision and overlay and code. They referenced the wrong codes. Um, they, they referenced standards, which don't apply. There, there were references to hardship. Uh, there were references to, to uh, the need requirement of, of affordable housing. Um, uh, there were there were statements that we have no loading zone. Uh, there were statements that we're going to make we're going to make th this portion of grant safe. Uh, we're doing the opposite. We're making it safer. We're eliminating curb cuts. We're increasing the size of the sidewalk. Um, so I, you know I have a problem with with these statements that were used uh, to solicit a volume uh, of letters and emails. By the way, m many many of which outside of came from outside of our jurisdiction. Um, you know, it, it's it's just problematic. Uh, several letters, uh, and, and the letter encouraged the more emails, the better. Please have, please have uh, multiple family members send in letters. We have we have letters from husbands and wives and daughters and and parents and in laws. Uh, I mean, it, it's uh, it's impressive, but you know, this city has to decide: uh, Are we going to redevelop Grandview Avenue in conformance with our code and our overlay, or are, are we going to be bullied? By a protest uh, of misinformed information, uh, that's going to you know, might as well throw the overlay away. If we're if we're going to submit uh, to the quantity uh, of emails and letters, rather than submitting to the quality of our overlay and the quality of this presentation and the quality of the plans, uh, because I you know, I am certain that that the team that we've assembled and the plans that we've assembled, I am certain that no developer can put forth a. a a more comprehensive proposal that satisfies the vision that you gave to us under the overlay. The city gave to us the game plan. We're, we're just the city's quarterback here executing the plan. And, uh, you know, and, and we're getting criticized for it in, in these flyers. Um, you know, the, 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 the flyer makes fun of us for having parking lifts. And, uh, you know, one, one of the uh, suggestions and requirements under the overlay is you you have cooperative parking and the words mechanical parking, even in 2007, our overlay envisioned mechanical parking lifts. And it's right there in the overlay. Uh, you know, the, the problem is that, that none of the folks that uh, e either wrote these flyers um, or, or received the flyers uh, you know, were informed about the overlay, which, which is the governing text. That, that's unfortunate. Um, you know, by the way, a lot of the flyers did resolve in, in positive support. Um, which we were very proud of. Um, you know, I, I, I did I did see thirty or forty letters in support, uh, and, I'll, and I'll end with this: the quality of the letters of support that we got were not form letters uh, that said "I live at X and I oppose this project," which was what the folks were instructed to say that received the flyers. Uh, but the letters that we received were from local accomplished architects who live in live and do business in Grandview. The letters were from Mr. Myers directly next to us to be impacted by this project. The statement of support from, from Mr. Fordhofer uh, in an email. The, the Wagenbrenner family, uh, who, who has owned the bank block for 20 plus years, wrote a letter in support. The owner of Balboa wrote a letter in support. Cameron Mitchell wrote a letter in support. Mr. Sorrell across the street, re realtor who's been at 1200 Grandview for, for over 10 years, wrote a letter uh, in support. Uh, the quality of the support that we received and we went up and down Grandview Avenue. We, we, we received almost 100% support from the commercial business owners up and down the strip. They want this type of development. And anybody who's driven up and down Grandview Avenue in the last several weeks has seen the vacancies and the blight that we now have, the challenge of, of, of redirecting up and down Grandview Avenue. 
we need the density, we need the mass, we need the people. We're not creating any problems with, with this development. At the opposite, we are fixing problems. We are self-parked. You know, our residents are going to shop and, and eat at these businesses up and down Grandview Avenue. Uh, we're going to replace two non-contributing houses uh, that, have, that have been here um, you know, and zoned for, for 20 plus years commercial. Um, so, you know, and I forgot some other businesses. I apologize. Zoco Design and Cub Shrub uh, and the day companies um, you know, all wrote letters in support as well. But I, I just wanted to, to you know, make the statement that there is significant support for this project. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Folks who support things don't normally write in. And, and we got so many letters of support from quality people who have invested a lot of time and money into our commercial Grandview Avenue district. And they are telling us that they want this, these two parcels to be redeveloped and that they like our plan. Um, with that, um, David, did you want to wave it? I mean, you want to say something? And then I think we'll get yeah, that. Hi, uh, I asked uh, Ryan, I'm David Bream, uh, architect uh, on the, on the uh, project team. I asked Ryan if I could just have a moment after receiving some of the materials. Uh, again, I am an architect, um, 35 years experience, uh, 11 years on the Columbus Development Commission, which is the city of Columbus's uh, planning and zoning uh, body. So, so I know that sitting in the seats of the commission members tonight, that, that voting requires gathering input and and coming to terms with um, uh, both consistent and conflicting opinions and perceptions on the project. Uh, you're looking at your own observations, you're looking at, at the community, the valuable community input, and you're looking at the applications, uh, the applicant's uh, presentation. Uh, I just want to talk a moment about the staff report. Um, again, I was in this, I've been in this, uh, this, this world for uh, doing these kinds of projects for many years on both sides of the team both sides of the table. And I have to say that this staff report is the most comprehensive, the most in-depth, the most researched and well thought out um, staff report that I've ever seen. Um, you know, what do you, what do you have with this? You have a, a sense of, uh, of the context of the project in, in the community and an, an objective understanding of what the project is. You've got citations from all of the uh, uh, applicable codes, plans, design guidelines, and a point-by-point -point analysis of how this project complies with the vast, vast majority of those, uh, of those provisions that are pointed out. You have illustrations which are uh, representing uh, um, solid, uh, desirable planning and design uh, principles. You've got photographs of precedent-setting projects that, that are in these documents that um, are, are to guide you and in, in, in your decision making about satisfying the vision and crafting the vision of Grandview Avenue. And I would suggest to you that uh, some of those projects, if you look at those photographs, they look to this today. Um, you have graphic representations of both current state and future state in the uh, um, of the of the corridor. And that future state diagram, as simple as it is, really tells a story about that vision of how projects that are mixture of uses, great urban infill and collected together along the corridor will bring about that economic uh, vitality and urban energy that, that the, uh, that the uh, overlay and other documents uh, speak to. And you have a, th a clear and thoughtful recommendation from the staff. And, and at one point in time, we did not, as, as Ryan suggested earlier, we did not have a positive recommendation from staff. And so we've worked hard and, and we're, we're just delighted by, um, uh, frankly, the work of Charlie and, and Liz and, and everyone at the city who contributed to understanding the project, working with us, giving us solid feedback, letting us respond to changes to the plan and, and moving forward. So I'd suggest that in this document, you have a, a roadmap to determine which way um, you're going to vote. And, and I believe it's a roadmap that guides you to understand and believe that this is a wise investment in and and is to vote. So kudos again for the uh, staff report. I just wanted to, to make a point of that. So thank you, Ryan.
with that, uh, thank you for uh, for all of the time, and uh, I think that concludes uh, our our presentation. I will I will stop sharing the screen now. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, it was such a rainy endorsement of the uh, staff report. Uh, it provides a good transition to uh, the staff report. <laughs> so, Liz, if you could. Uh, Maybe go over what uh, what's been submitted. Yes. Um, so I actually kind of wrote out some thoughts earlier today because you guys have to have the staff report. I imagine with the level of consideration that you all are um, known to provide to projects like this, uh, and knowing what an important project is in the city, that you've read it and understand it. What I thought it would might maybe be helpful would would be actually if I contextualized what I was thinking in writing it, which really, I don't know, I could almost not do now that uh, with David's background, but um, commentary there, but I'll, I'll read it nonetheless. Obviously, private development, um, private development is uh, not really the city's business, if you will. Um, you know, private property owners can propose projects what is the city's business? And what I mean by that is uh, our interests, the city's interests is what results from private development. So the public sphere that results from private development. And in my um, review to create the staff report, I was very much focused on what has been codified and um, imagined through the various planning processes and articulated in the various uh, documents that the city has created over the years. Uh, and what those say about what the city, and when I say the city, I think it's important also to understand that what that actually means is the community. It's not the city administration or leadership even. It's, it's those folks acting on behalf of and facilitating an opportunity for community um, members to participate in planning processes and articulate the vision that the collective uh, community members have for um, their own community. So um, bearing that in mind and, and uh, understanding that it is um, protecting those community interests that um, are what the codes and the planning documents and all that drive at, that will really form the basis for um, my consideration in the staff report. So with that sort of preamble, um, this is what I was uh, thinking to share with you guys tonight. Um, as you know, Grandview Avenue is the city's historic business district. Um, the rich community life that exists there today has arisen out of a combination of factors, including um, the work of uh, private property owners, similar to today's applicant, who develop building and space buildings and spaces in prior eras that we all benefit from today, and where we live, work, play, uh, hang out, walk around, and enjoy. Uh, to maintain and enhance that rich balance today. Um, as I mentioned, the particulars of a lot of private development uh, are guided by the uh, goals and standards developed through public input processes um, as a means for the community to influence the private development in ways that po positively contribute to the overall goals of the community. The overlay standards that we've been referencing arose from just such a community planning effort. Um, and as you know, both city staff as well as planning commission uh, has been working with this applicant for many months now, um, uh, aiming at, at providing feedback that would enhance the um, benefits that would be received within the public sphere uh, from this private development that is proposed. And the applicant has been very responsive to um, those requests. Um, the uh, the community plan, the, the Grandview Avenue area plan, the over overlay district all do recognize that the development of this district is still in process um, and that the existing streetscape has challenges. Um, some of those challenges, uh, as noted through the various planning processes that occurred over the years, um, have included recognition that the current development is not cohesive, either in terms of form or use. Uh, with public, uh, with, excuse me, with uh, commercial uses and residential uses, single family residential use avenues still today. 
um, and that the public space there um, is not particularly consistent, not particularly well coordinated among the various properties. Um, and that's especially true on the south end of the block, um, south of the bank block on the west side. With the older homes and the small and mid-scale commercial buildings, there's a lot of variety, but there's also a lot of inconsistency that, that uh, impacts the public sphere in a, in a not particularly great way. The setbacks really vary, and they're particularly um, inconsistent at these two properties, um, with the sidewalk shrinking down to only maybe five feet or so, um, making it difficult really for people to even pass right there, including people backing out from those um, single-family residential houses backing out on Grandview Avenue, um, parking and deliveries. Um, the other thing that I was struck by recently, I was looking at the site um, on site, walking on the east side of the avenue, looking at the west side, um, just noting how uh, disconnected the east, the, sorry, the south and the north parts of the avenue are um, from a pedestrian experience perspective. Uh, you know, if you're sort of browsing shops, you get to a place where that sort of falls apart and then gets reconnected again when you get to the south end. Um, and so there, you know, opportunity here to improve that experience, if you will. But the work to do all of that, all of those improvements, isn't really something the city can do directly. It is something that has to occur when private development is happening um, with the city impacting that private development in a way that prioritizes the city's goals. Um, so in looking at the staff report, not only or the creating the staff report, not only am I looking at the specific uh, requirements articulated um, in the codes and guidelines, but also looking at some of the higher level benefits um, uh, that the city uh, community is interested in and would benefit from. Um, so you get a substantially substantial widening of the sidewalk, obviously, which will have a big improvement to the public sphere along that area with new street trees, uh, room for pedestrians, places to linger. Um, the uh, older single family residential structures are not contributing to a commercial district right now, and in some ways conflict. Um, uh, those uses are kind of private uses and of a very public area. Um, the curb cuts that are there, obviously very disconnected where there's a heavily trafficked uh, pedestrian zone. And so the reduction in those is significant. I believe that the addition of a on-street delivery uh, zone is also a significant improvement to the, to the avenue on the whole. Um, and then again, experientially, you know, having, having that connected, starting to, to better connect the, the north and south pieces of the strip will create a more um, consistent, comprehensive um, pedestrian experience. So those are all things in my mind um, as I was looking at the, writing the staff report. Um, and then to address a couple of the more specific issues that were lingering from last time, um, the, uh, so the, the side yard setback and rereading that and really speaking with our city attorney and understanding the charge of the planning commission my reading of that particular provision really actually now is not that it's even a variance, but that it's within planning commission's purview to determine what the side yard setback should be all the way down to zero. Um, so that's not necessarily a deviation from the code. The loading zone, as I mentioned, seems to be very reasonably resolved. Um, and the big issue remaining seems to be the proposed project's height or number of stories. Um, I would say through through coming to understand this development as well as researching other current building practice norms, uh, it's really pretty evident that you can't actually fit a three-story structure within a 35-foot height limitation. Um, yet, when I look in the planning, the community plan three stories is uh, contemplated within the plan, the various different uh, planning documents, um, particularly when setbacks or other differentiation is provided for the first floor to really prioritize the experience of that pedestrian scale piece. In this case, you have the whole building setback um, to that build two line, which helps to mitigate the, the height or scale. I would note actually that the um, Masonic building on the south is not set back nearly this far. And I don't know exactly what the dimension is. I think it's like, it might be eight or 10 feet. 
Um, but so it feels a little oppressive when you're walking next to it, but the additional setback for this building will provide that kind of public space and an appropriate scale for the public space compared to the height of the building. Um, so uh, it will not be, I think, as impactful actually as the Masonic building is um, on the public sphere. Also, I would note that uh, the single story buildings that are there now are actually as misaligned, if you will, with that 30 foot minimum that's identified in the overlay district as the proposed project would be. So in some sense, um, the community plan and the overlay district does seem to be driving towards uh, higher structures. Um, and then I think the other thing that really became clear in speaking with um, our uh, legal advisor over time as well is that the planning commission is charged with an ability to interpret all the codes and standards with flexibility depending on the situation because we are an existing community with a lot of infill uh, development and you've got to kind of look at the specific location um, it's a difficult to write planning um, codes and standards that are going to apply perfectly well when you don't have a, a, a green scape a, a green field to start with and can do whatever you want um, so there's uh, flexibility built into planning commission's um, charge as far as looking at the, the project. Uh, and I would argue, I think it's reasonable to say that the overlay district, in a sense, provides some of those unique challenges all by itself by having this additional layer of code requirements within a C2 zoning that it demands a lot of things of the applicant that a regular C2 zoning wouldn't, and therefore is, in a sense, a unique um, pressure on a project that comes into play for your consideration. Um, also, in looking at the, and we were provided some of the materials that you saw tonight a little earlier to look at, obviously, um, the three-dimensional views uh, that were provided, I think, actually serve in, served in my mind to um, highlight, if you will, that the, the majority of the impacts on um, adjacent properties are actually result from things that are hooked into the overlay district itself. So you already get a fairly substantial building envisioned by the by the overlay district. Um, the majority of, of the impact that, that a project that was fully compliant, if you will, would still be there. Um, and and the applicant has made a you know substantial effort to reduce the um, impact of that of the fourth floor and to really accent the third floor um, and on balance, I guess uh, the recommendation arises because if, if you consider all of that against also the opportunity that represents to achieve the goals that, that are embedded in the community plan that the community has identified for itself seems to be an opportunity that the city has to execute on some of those community goals. Um, and so it, it, taking, you know, that, that is, that is sort of the most important thing in a sense for the community is that they have an opportunity. We collectively, the city collectively has an opportunity to get some of what it wants. Um, and that seems to me to be a, a really important consideration. And so, um, that as well as all of the other, uh, considerations, both embedded in the code and a little bit more flexibly interpreted, um, gave rise to the positive recommendation. I can go through some of the content in the in the report if you'd like. Um, otherwise, I felt like the background um, and kind of framing of a report might be more helpful than than going through the uh, each item by item. But I can do that if you'd like me to um, at your pleasure. I, I don't think it's necessary. I appreciate kind of giving the framing of the report, and you know, if commission members had a specific question or. Um, you know, they can ask it, you know, when it's our turn to, to address the commission. So, sure. um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, city attorney, Guzam, do you, I, I believe you may have had something to add as well in the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Gentry. Uh, I actually, Mr. Crossley, uh, brought this up already and I'll just kind of, um, emphasize this, uh, given that a number of the comments that were submitted to the planning commission did reference 
uh, the notion of hardship, that is not a consideration for the Planning Commission. Uh, and I say this on the record, I, I know that the Planning Commission members are aware of this, but I say this uh, preemptively in the event that anybody who intends to speak uh, later uh, had any thoughts about bringing that up. That is not a factor uh, for uh, the Planning Commission's consideration. The Planning Commission is asked to review a project based on its um, ability to meet the goals and objectives of the community plan and of the overlay district. Um, uh, exactly as Ms. Kelker just laid it out, um, there are in some instances more standards set forth in the overlay and in some instances um, uh, the, the C2 standards would apply. Um, so again, there is, there is discretion on the part of the Planning Commission to consider any of the variances within the goals and purposes that have been established um, in the text that is known as the overlay text. So um, that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you, Chairman Gentry. Thank you, Ms. Kazam. Um, Francis, you want to kick things off? Sorry, I couldn't find my button <laughs> on the screen. Um, thank you for um, addressing our comments from the last meeting. Um, I want to address some of your comments now. <laughs> um, it, I, I mentioned this on the first meeting. I believe it was the first meeting. Maybe it was the second that. You know, people keep bringing it up, like the houses that exist there right now, you know, how they don't fit. Again, no one is saying that we don't want that site or both sites to be developed. I mean, I will approve right now the consolidation of the properties. I will vote for the, the what's the other one? The conditional use, definitely. I mean, that's what the, we want in the street. That said, I still had some concerns with the building. Um, I appreciate you working with the neighbors, uh, commercial, you know, sharing parking and things like that. Those are great benefits to the community. But just that doesn't mean we can still have, have those benefits and improve some other stuff to get even more benefits. So um, it's not so much the height. It's the height and the area that the building takes. You know, if you if you give me four stories, but it's all to the front and you have a big back, maybe it's not as this mass in there. Um, looking at the renderings that you were showing to, I appreciate that, but actually, that for me looked like what I think it was going to look. So you look up and you see blue sky, and all of a sudden this building and then more blue sky. So there's nothing else around it. It's, it makes me think that it is sticking up. I look at the building, I actually, I think what I would like and I could vote on and approve, it's removing, not the fourth floor, removing the second or the third, like just slicing it out and then everything comes down. So that looks less of a, this gigantic, huge building over there. Um, and you can do that and still provide the benefits that you mentioned. I mean, I think it will be benefit for you too. You will not need those lifts in the parking, which is a saving and the upfront cost of the building. Future maintenance, I mean, I'm sure those lifts at some point will break down or you have to maintain that. Um, you will not have a problem with the off-street load in future. So again, I'm not in support, not, not in support of the, the development and even the building. I just think, can we just still reduce it a little bit more? Um, my second concern is we talk about the development and the, and the future of Grandview Avenue. So I'm thinking about that. And the way I see this building, I don't see how anything else can develop around it because it's a standalone building. You know, you, you mentioned about the 
the property on the north of it, which is a very small, it can be developed. Well, now it's going to be even worse because they can't build something two stories next to your building because there's there's um, patios looking to that side. So I think you've done a lot in bringing a lot of the improvement and benefits. I, I acknowledge that, but I think we still have some room for improvement um in my opinion and that's all i have i think we had talked enough <laughs> so thanks and, uh sarah um thank you i'll i'll start by just saying that i agree with a lot of what commissioner rourke has said um and just to give uh, a similar uh, perspective with maybe a couple of other thoughts. Um, you know, I, I appreciate very much um, the applicant, had the change that the applicant has made. I said this at the last meeting, I think um, they're thoughtful and I think they respond directly to some of the things that um, the neighbors and the commissioners have asked for. Um, you know, I, I think our process is working. I mean, we're doing exactly what we should be doing right now which is having a healthy debate about how to interpret you know the code in the overlay and i i really appreciate the work of the city and the consultant um with the what i agree is an excellent um staff report and trying to provide that guidance um i i might not agree with everything i don't agree with every quite everything in the staff report but it, but it's um it's exactly what we need to be able to um to really thoughtfully consider this and give it the, the consideration it deserves. Um, you know, the, the applicant um, went through systematically address a lot of the um, items that we brought up at the last meeting, um, which again is really appreciative and I think representative of the, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the genuine effort to try to um, come up with ways of, of um, uh, making changes that really get at, at um, some important issues. But I, I think one of the things that was lost, and I'm not saying this is intentional, but in that sort of approach is sort of the, when you go, when you look through all of the meetings we've had to date, you know, there, there's been a consistency, certainly from me, I think from others as well, um, in our, our concern about the height amassing um, of, of this building. And I, um, you know, I know from the very first meeting um, I have expressed concern about both the height um, up to the third third floor and and the fourth and the the fourth floor addition. And I know that the third floor has been brought down. I understand from Grandview Ave it's to 30, uh, 39, No, sorry. Uh, all, essentially, I think it's thirty nine eight eight thirty nine three eight. So effectively forty feet, which is effectively the same height. As the Masonic Building, and I I know from the very first meeting I've expressed concern about that. Um, this idea of targeting, having to hit that exact target between thirty and thirty five feet, I think is a little bit of a mischaracterization of the comments of some of the commissioners, certainly myself. Where um, what we've talked more about is looking at the overall context and having a stepping up from the bank block to the Masonic Building. Um, it doesn't mean that I couldn't support a building that's 36 feet, the building itself, not the third floor, <laughs> the whole, you know, it, it doesn't mean that um, that there's not a building that doesn't quite fit with exactly within um, th that narrow window, but still meets the spirit and intent of the of the code and the, and the overlay. Um, but I, I do think that um, that the, the project does not yet achieve that you know, that stepping down and, um, you know, th there are, you know, specifically in the staff report, um, some items that are where compliance is, um, is indicated, um, um, uh, where the, uh, the, the uh, sorry, the, the overlay, uh, section or like G no, sorry, H. Two, you know, where it talks about having a co coherent form. Um, 
the one that I pointed to last to last time on page six, item L, talking about the cohesivity, um, promoting a cohesive community scale. And, you know, these are matters of interpretation, but I do think the direct context along this portion of Grandview Avenue is the most relevant context um, for us to look to. Um, again, that doesn't mean that we don't, but that I don't support variation in scale. Um, but in the absence of um, uh, any other, you know, kind of upper limit, I need to use my best judgment. And that judgment tells me that a 48, um, 40, 49 foot building um, to the top and then 40 feet, you know, just to the third floor um, isn't quite getting there. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is a project that's grossly incongruous with the intent of the overlay. I think it does achieve a lot of things that um, that I would like to see. And, you know, I want to be clear that the mix of uses, um, the, um, the type of housing, the attention to making a positive architectural contribution to Grandview Avenue are 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 all really valuable and and things that I want want to see, um, and I I appreciate and and respect if the staff report has um, you know came to the come to the conclusion that those things um, you know have resulted in a project that um, that's where it should be. You know we all probably have have a, we all have a tipping point and. I just don't think I'm quite there yet with this height and the massing that's being proposed. Um, like Commissioner Rourke said, there are things that I can I could certainly vote in favor of um, tonight, but I'm I'm not I'm just not yet there um, on that those critical points. Thanks, Sarah. Bob. I'm on. I'm unmuted, right? Am I still muted? You're good to go. Thank you, uh, Ryan and Mark. Very, very compelling presentation. Very compelling. I'm going to come at the comments that have been made in a slightly different way. Um, first, I don't think. Uh, you would start a project using a height as a starting point. For example, you said 30 feet. We had to be over 30 feet, so we need had to be over 30 feet. I don't think you would use that as a starting point for the design. I think what you might use is some of the given conditions of the site and the surroundings. And the uh, uh, site, the immediate site for me, there are five parcels at about the same size, none of them distinctive. Two of them could have been distinctive to celebrate the intersection of, uh, uh, is it Hess and Grandview Avenue? For example, if some special building wanted to be located there, the town planners would have made that lot a special lot. They chose not to. They chose to have five very, very similar lots all lined up. Uh, I might also look at a, another reason for, um, for clues, and that is I'd go to the bank block, and I'd go, and unfortunately, the bank block added a scaffolding in front of it, but 2nd Avenue dead ends into the bank block. It's as, absolutely marvelous that to get into the second floor of the bank block, you walk down second, you cross the street, you open the door, you go upstairs. It says the bank people knew that that was a condition of the city and they were going to extend it. And they did. And it's a, it's, a, it's a condition and a way to look at design that makes things fit better. 
if we walk down Grandview Avenue, uh, south to north, uh, we have a house, Salisbury's house, and we have a three-story building, not 50 feet high, 35, 36 feet, maybe, maybe high, maybe 40, but it's a three-story building. Then we have a, a apartment building. Then, thanks to a connection between two single-family houses, we have a, a dentist office. So I would say the first block has some continuity because of the dentist office anchored by the three-story building. We cross Hess, and there's a series of row houses, all pretty much the same, and gives another continuity to that block between Hess and Second. So we have two pieces that are pretty good. Now, if we go across the street, it's already been mentioned that there is no con continuity after the Mason building uh, up until we get to the bank block. Well, let's go back across the street to uh, Spencer and the other side of Second, and there we have a discombobulation of additions and subtractions over the years. So there's no continuity there. Um, we add uh, the Spanish restaurant, and it doesn't have much continuity. We go across the street, and there's the bank block. The saving grace of Grandview Avenue. Probably the only reason that somebody said in their letter, it reminds me of the Champs-Élysées. And uh, I thought that was a very intriguing comment, that Champs-Élysées would be equivalent to uh, Grandview Avenue. So the three most contiguous and continuous places are the west side of Grandview Avenue, the bank block, the east side of Grandview Avenue, the condominiums, and then the east side of Grandview Avenue from Hess South to First Avenue. So back to the five lots. There's nothing special about the two lots that you've purchased. Um, there's nothing unique in where they are. They could as easily be two north, two south. And so now I go to planning principles in general. And it seems to me helpful for us as commissioners to say, we want the city to be better. We really do. And I would say with all honesty, you have worked very hard to do the best you possibly can. But I would also say in making the city better, we don't want to make problems for other people. We don't want to design something that makes it difficult to, um, to use the lot next door in either direction. And the staff report, page 12, illustrates that perfectly, <laughs> that we're not really gonna have anything much different than what we have now, the different size, sizes, but the continuity of the two single family houses that will be lost, the continuity of the two single family houses, the one story office building, the other one story office building, and the chiropractor's thing, won't be much made better by this taller building. So then I want to go to another another place to look for a concept. And I say the bank block. It's interesting that this lot is 180 feet deep. Two parallel parking bays of 60 feet is 120 feet. Subtract that from 180, and you have a 60-foot building footprint, unless you build over top a little bit of the parking. <laughs> and it's interesting that the bank block they also have two bays of 60, about 60 foot parking. And indeed, Mr. Wagenbrenner could take that and maybe someday build a parking deck to allow him to build more space on or above the bank block. And so I would say, I wonder if that makes any sense for this site. Rather than orient the building east and west, which I don't know of another condition in Grandview that has done that, Let's orient the building north and south with party lines <coughs> at edges of property or at other convenient points. And behind that, have two bays of parking, which will allow you to do a parking deck. And for me, that would then say, well, maybe, well, maybe that's a better direction. Now, I hate to say that, although I have said it three other times um, at previous meetings, because you have put so much wonderful work in this, and I'd hate to see you have to throw all that out. I don't know if you will or you won't. But I do think it's a better model for developing this piece of ground. Now, I have a sort of semi-sarcastic presentation. 
<coughs> that we've been talking about. We'll start with 30 feet and see where it gets us. Um, this is a proposal for a, a pencil building of uh, 44 units in 22 floors. Can you see that? That can be built on this site. So in closing, <clears throat> I'm in favor of a lot of what you've done, but I have to not be approval of the, the concept of the plan. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Eric? Sure, can you guys hear me? All right. Um, yeah, I want to thank, uh, yeah, I guess, the applicant, staff. Um, report is thorough. Um, I do have maybe one more question uh, regarding the re report. Um, but but really, I think, um, you know, everybody's kind of outlined our role as a planning commission, what we're here to do, um, you know, evaluate all the information, evaluate the code, um, and, and bring together recommendations on what's presented in front of us. Um, you know, I'm hearing a lot of good, so I, I, I've got a similar sentiment from the rest of the planning commission members. Um, you know, one thing we're, we're tasked with is, um, you know, keeping track of um, the city uh, plan. So, um, gosh, I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but, um, you know, keeping track of community plan, um, it, it, it calls out a lot of these pressures that we're feeling from redevelopment uh, within Grandview across, you know, and outside Grandview. Um, so I, I guess that's what it comes down to on this site. So when we, when we come down to balancing all of the different parts of this project, um, you know, we do have to really focus on this specific location. Um, First Avenue, Deo Davis is, is a bit different. You know, I believe it's five or six lots wide. Um, the development is for, is facing First Avenue, but uh, the parking is set back in the rear and it's more traditional parking. Um, so while I'm not opposed to um, the overall height of the building, I think that's I think that's okay. It is really the scale and the location of it. Um, so really the massing, basically kind of echoing what uh, Francis was saying, the layout. Um, Bob brought up the idea of a, of a rear parking garage. I think that'd be something really interesting to explore. Um, but I, I think the other element that we've talked about here a lot is, you know, the community benefit. What is this type of project? Uh, how is this going to benefit the community? And you've done a great job of explaining, you know, the number of ways that this type of project will benefit the, the community. And uh, the staff report echoes that as well. Uh, so I definitely, you know, see the positive sides of the loading zone, um, changing the number of uh, curb cuts. Um, but again, I think there's, there, there may be a, a better way to achieve those same goals. Um, let's see here. And I, this is, a, I'll get into my technical questions, I guess, here. Um, you know, the utilities, I, I know we've, we've talked about this before. I think I asked this during the last meeting. Um, there was really no utility plan provided. Um, you know, part of number A or, or item A, 1A here is, is the major site plan review. You know, we're we're going to need to see that utility plan to really complete that part of the process. Um, so I think I'll, I'll go back and you know I would say to the rest of the planning commission, you know I'm open to kind of examining some of the other items here um, on the um, on your submission. Um, you know, definitely allowing conditional use for the residential units on the second story. You know, certainly in favor of that. Um, item C here, obviously the height. We're we're kind of talking about what to do there. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if we can really, if you're comfortable moving forward with those other elements. Um, but I, I just want to say that, um, yeah, in general, there's a lot of elements that we're looking at. The staff report has done a good job of, of bringing them together. Um, I just, something about the, the, this specific location and the, the way the building is situated, um, makes it challenging. It's, it's more pressure on, um, on the neighbors, obviously. Uh, and, and I've been trying to balance that pressure with, um, you know, the benefit to the Grandview Avenue. So I think that is the focus here. I think we're, 
you know, at, at the heart of this discussion is balancing the benefit to Granby Avenue and Liz laid out all the good advantages of connecting the street. Uh, and Bob took us on a walk through Granby Avenue there, kind of painting the pictures of both sides. Um, so I definitely see that value um, of this project, um, but I'm just, I, I still need more information um, before I can really vote on the, the entire site plan review. So um, that's it for me. Thanks, Eric. Um, Mr. Crosley and your team, I appreciate the, the presentation and, uh, and all the details. Liz, the uh, staff report again, home run. Uh, thanks for your work putting it together. Um, I guess I have one specific question about what was presented and have a couple of thoughts, but it looks like the balconies in the rear have returned. Um, the drawings that we reviewed back in October did not have those. I was just curious if, you know, what, why the change there if we were trying to be less impactful on the, uh, on the, the neighbors on Broadview. Um, do you recall the drawings from the October meeting? They were just kind of the, the ones where the doors open and you can't go out onto the balcony. Um, the ones I'm looking at tonight have balconies that look like you can step out onto them. Um, I mean, it, it, was that was that a change that was purposely made, or was it an oversight? Mr. Chairman, may I, may I respond? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, it, yes, uh, that that was an intentional change uh, when we were challenged to go back uh, and look at the plans and the, and the viability of the project. Uh, and the viability of those four units uh, at the back, uh, at the rear of the project, um, you know, and, and as we studied uh, uh, the, the market buyer demands, um, you know, we, we were reminded that buyers in this market expect and anticipate some outdoor uh, living space, even if it's only just a small enough balcony to fit a chair or a grill. Um, it, it's really a requirement of buyers these days. We looked at the code. Um, there's, there's, in our understanding, no, no issue with those balconies. Oh, by the way, as you pointed out, we did have Joliet balconies there before. Um, yes, these are, um, you, know, you can walk out onto these. We, we don't view them as impactful. Um, but you know, in, in talking with staff and, and city consultants, uh, it was really important for us that we not bastardize this project or those four units, uh, we, we want them uh, to be enjoyed uh, and usable um, by our residents, uh, just as the residents behind us have outdoor living space and, and rear porches and patios. And um, you know, so there's only four of them. We don't view them as impactful. They're very small. Uh, they're in locations, as you saw on the sight line exhibit, they're, they're really only even visible, um, I think from, from one of four or five of the lots. Um, and, and so, yes, um, we, um, we did, and, and, and um, they, they were on the plans. They were called out in my summary of changes um, that was disclosed um, uh, to staff. Um, so does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I guess just, you know, big picture, um, for major site plan review, you know, planning commission has to, to look at how does the project fit in to the community plan? And, and as you mentioned, you know, specific to this, how's it fit into the overlay? But we also have to determine how does the business use integrate with the neighborhoods? And I think that's really the crux of what we're trying to, to mesh here is you know, we, we, we have a neighborhood and we have a commercial use and they are coming together no matter when someone about their house or when someone about the commercial property. They are coming together. And I think I think the, the perspective, uh, the ground level perspective drawings that you, you presented were excellent, um, especially having the red line of the 35 feet. Um, I, I think that is very helpful for everyone in this meeting tonight to see what will be on that site eventually. Um, you know, going, I, I appreciate you going back and addressing everyone's comments from the previous meeting. Um, although, even going back for the very first time this project was presented, I had 
registered my concern about a fourth floor. And I, I still hold that feeling. Now, you know, saying it was a narrow target, I, I apologize. That didn't mean to hit between 30 and 35 feet, but it, it kind of sounds like it when I watched the video today. So I get that. My narrow target comment meant to be something that achieves city's purposes on Granby Avenue, something that achieves your objectives as a business center on Granby Avenue, and something that that takes into account the neighbors and property. That's the target we need to hit. And it's not an easy one. I get it. I don't I don't think it's I, I know it's not possible for you to bring me a 35 foot building that meets everyone's objectives. I don't think the building does that either. I think there's something in between that could accomplish all those things. Um, that's that's all I've got to add at this point. Um, all right, now uh, uh, Councilman Kinsera is recused. Mayor Kearns, do you have any uh, anything, any comments or questions? I really just want to thank everybody who's participated in this process. Those who commented, uh, thank the applicant, um, staff. Uh, a lot of diligence went into this and conscientious review of many factors. And uh, certainly thank the commissioners. Thank you, Mayor. Um, typically now is when I like to talk about uh, emails and, and electronic communications, but I think Mr. Crosley gave a nice overview of the the volume and uh, you know types of, of uh, communications we got both for and against uh, this project. Um, I, I, you know, I will say um, there there were a lot. You know, they said the same thing, but there were some very thoughtful uh, letters both for and against. Uh, this project, and we appreciate hearing any feedback from members of the communities, business owners, and people that have a stake in the way of life we're trying to build here in Grandview. So, we appreciate that. Um, having said that, we'll move on to for folks that have called in to comment. Um, like I said previously uh, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, I'll I'll call on you. You unmute yourself. Uh, we'll three or four, three or four minutes. The comments, uh, the questions, and then uh, we'll move on to the next uh, person. Um, I don't necessarily have a specific order here, though. I, I grouped everyone by their uh, uh, by their addresses. So uh, you know, if you want to use your time together, if you want to speak individually, uh, that that's completely up to you. I uh, just remember. Um, just remember if you need to uh, mute uh, the live stream so there's no feedback. Uh, but we can start with uh, uh, Lisa uh, Calif. You're on the line. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak um, on behalf of my husband and I. He's here with me. He's a UPS driver, so just got in from uh, delivering lots of packages. Long day at work. Long day at work. <laughs> um, but my family and I live at 1236. Just Avenue. Uh, make sure you state your name and address. Yep. Lisa Calif, and we live at uh, in Ethan Calif. We live at 1236 Broadview Avenue, adjacent to this proposed development. Um, this is the third meeting that um, I've requested to speak in opposition to this proposed project. Uh, my main concerns have not changed. Um, so I continue to ask the planning committee to uh, not approve this project. Uh, as a third grade teacher, I teach uh, hard skills, which are easily quantified and soft skills, which are much more difficult to quantify. And um, when the developer made changes to the trash location and added the fencing and the landscaping, those would be similar to um, the soft skills that are nice to have, and they're, that's great. But unfortunately, uh, the hard skills of this project, uh, the combined height and overall massing, um, the developer has not been able to hit the mark. So um, in a normal year, 
I feel like residents of Grandview would be busy with social events and activities throughout the different seasons where community members would be discussing this project and staying informed and exercising their right to voice their con concerns. But this is not a normal year has isolated our community members and overworked each of us in different ways. So I just wanted to say that I personally spoke with 40 Grandview residents and 39 of them were totally against this idea of the project as it's proposed. So in my opinion, the residents you heard from in opposition to this project are just a small fraction of the residents who would have filled in boxes with concerns in a normal non-COVID year. Uh, your decision is will greatly impact the future uh, development of Grandview Avenue. I'm so grateful for your comments this evening that echo much of our feelings in the Caliph household. So I just want to thank you for your time and consideration. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, uh, the Almers, uh, Travis and Laura. Yes. Thank you, Chairman Gentry. Appreciate it. Um, I'm Travis Ulmer. I'm going to speak on behalf of my wife, Laura, and our children. We live at 1240 Broadview, which is immediately behind the project. Um, to everyone listening, and, and especially any commission, time to listen to the community. Uh, we, the community and neighbors, truly appreciate what you're doing. Um, Grandview Avenue, and, and specifically between first and third, the saving grace of Grandview, as Commissioner Wendell eloquently said, it's what people think of when they say they're heading to Grandview. It's the heart of this unique and charming community. We live immediately behind this proposal, and we're here in adamant opposition to how it stands currently. Just like we were over a year ago in Town Hall, where there were residents packed in the space in opposition, we overflowed into the lobby, we spilled out the front door, and even though you can't see us all tonight and you can't feel our presence, we're still here. 91% of the emails you received are against this. 100% of the neighbors stand withstanding are against this. And it's because the two critical core issues still remain. It's the overall form, the overall scale, and the code height being exceeded by 48%. That's why we are still here. Again, Grandview Avenue, this part is the saving grace and it's what everybody thinks of when they're heading to Grandview. We, I, I said this to the applicants when we met and I said, bring it to appropriate scale and code and we all shake hands. That's the win-win. Responsible development that respects us as neighbors and respects the history and the saving grace of Grandview is all we ask. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you taking us into consideration. Uh, thanks, Lauren Travis. I appreciate it. Um, the, the ships, the ships on. Doug, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Oh, I don't care. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my name's Eleni Ship. I live at 1242 Broadview Avenue. Um, first of all, I'd like to reassure you all that the neighbors are in favor of development of this site. Uh, we recognize that um, development is needed and that density is desired, and we also desire it. We just want it to be with the right mass and scale. So we're echoing a lot of the comments that you guys have made. We want it to be developed. Um, we just feel like it's, the height is significantly over what we would have expected, right? We would have expected 35 feet. So having it be 50 feet just feels enormous. Um, you know, the Masonic building has been used as a comparison, but it's adjacent to commercial. It's adjacent to the bank, but, to, but even then, I mean, I took my measuring tape out tonight and I went from the back of the Masonic building all the way to the Broadview back property line, it's over a hundred feet, right? So this is not, not only taller than the Masonic building, but it comes within the 25 feet. So if we could get to something that is within code or not this huge scale, 
then I think you would have the neighbors far more supportive. Um, I think also that the reason you're seeing so many community letters is because of the comments that you all made. People feel it feels too big. It still feels too big. It feels out of character, out of scale. You know, not everybody's living on Broadview Avenue, right? A lot of these letters came from people who are looking down Grandview Avenue and saying, that just feels too big. And in fact, I talked to one woman who moved from Bexley because of it. She felt like Bexley got out of hand and she came to Grandview because she felt that was more um, in scale. Um, the other thing I worry about is the precedent. The precedent that this would be if we start to consider buildings that are much higher, right? Like where does it stop in terms of responsible development? Um, and thank you, Chairman Gentry, for talking about the balconies in the back because we thought that was a change to the positive and then it came back and it was back there. So we felt like we had gone backwards from the previous plan on that. But look, we support a win-win solution. I work in private equity. My sister company is a real estate development company. I understand what the developer is going through. It's part of my business as well and my sister company. I get it. I want him to make money. <laughs> I want to have developmental, you know, development. The problem is we haven't addressed the core issue. We still haven't addressed the core issue. Um, we offered win-win. I, I know they've developed, they've worked on this for over 18 months. We've spent hundreds of hours, too, trying to look at this. And I'm sure you guys all saw our letter. The sight lines that were shown were a bit misleading. We looked at sight lines hiring an architect from our outdoor living spaces, which looked dramatically different um, and not from a random spot in our in our driveway. Um, so, you know, success for us. Thank you for moving the dumpster. We appreciate that. You know, that was a good change. We liked that. Um, can we eliminate the fourth floor? Can we get close to 35 feet, right? Can we eliminate the balconies? Can we put evergreen landscaping that's taller? I mean, you saw even from their own sight lines that the fence and the landscaping, it doesn't do much to address the massing. You know, could we get taller with those? We talked with Strader and they said they might be able to go to the Carolinas and see if they can't get something that's much, much taller. I mean, not for a 50 foot building. Right. I mean, it would have to come down, but we're so appreciative, you guys. I mean, I know this is tough. It's been tough on the developer and the applicant. It's been tough on you guys as you're all looking at everything. We just feel really thankful that you're listening to us and you're listening to the community. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. That's what, that's my thoughts. Thank you, Miss Miss Ship. Uh, Mr. Ship. Um. I would just echo a, a lot of the comments that have already been said. Um, there are benefits, clear benefits to developing um, those two lots. The, the two houses do not fit with the vision of the community. Um, but you you guys, the, the commission, we appreciate you taking the time and the effort to, uh, to review the plans carefully, to take community input um, and uh, you know it, it's at the end of the day it's your decision and from and I trust that you guys will make the right decision for the city that that is also a, a good decision for the for the neighbors um, so thank you for um, letting us have a chance to chime in tonight thank you mr. ship uh, Holmans uh, Tyler and Kristen yeah thank you can you hear us okay Okay. Uh, yeah, so my name's Tyler Holman. This is Kristen, my wife. We're at 1252 Broadview Avenue. Um, so without echoing everything that our, our current neighbors have already said, I want to maybe take a little different angle here. Uh, but first, start by saying thank you, commission members. Um, really, we all echo and hear everything that you've said and take that to heart. I think you guys did a fantastic job so far um, in giving your feedback. So I echo a lot, and if not all, of what you guys have already um, given the developer. Um, but with that, you know, I want to go back uh, a year, you know, in a couple months back to last November and just remember that, 
you know, in a non pandemic time, had we had the entire community able to come into a building and meet and talk and see everyone in person. Um, but not only that, everybody in the community is able to give their opinion and, and vocalize themselves. Um, but here we are today in the pandemic environment where, um, you know, the whole community essentially is uh, resting on the 10 surrounding withstanding members um, of this building, which is maybe not fully represented of the entire thousand, you know, houses within Grandview. Um, so I just want to say that and maybe, you know, take a look at how can we figure out what the rest of the community is feeling about this development? Because that was one of the things that us and the neighbors, we decided, you know, we were looking at is how can we get more of Grandview to know that this is happening when only 10 of us can speak? We can't all physically go and tell you and show you our support. So let's go door to door and talk to neighbors and get them you know, either excited for or against this project. Let's let them know that this is coming to our community, right? And so when we did that, I know personally, we talked to many of the neighbors around the community and almost all of them were against, you know, this development because of the exact same things that you guys have mentioned, um, the overall size and scale and that it doesn't fit that specific part of the block. Um, and so my question to you, I wanna kind of change this is, my question to you guys is, you know, what have you heard? Because all I hear from these meetings are, are the developers speaking for an hour, an hour and a half, and then the 10 community members who obviously we're all neighbors and we talk, you know, but we don't get to see what the rest of the community feels because we're not in that environment anymore. So would you guys be willing to just share with us what you personally have heard over the past year, whether that's support for the project, um, opposition, because really what I see right now is, you know, 90% against and 10% for, but that's all that we get to see. And I don't get to see the community in front of you guys like we used to. Well, I can't answer that question. Um, you know, any, any documentation we get regarding the case um, is public record. And it, I, I believe it's all posted on online. Um, I know, I, and, and I'm not sure, if, Megan, how long it takes to, to get some of these things posted, but it's uh, already online. I mean, well, I mean, from today, from from the meeting today. You mean the comments, Perry? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's anything the like, public comments already online. Uh, that's how good. That's how good staff is here. Um, you know, so basically, what's posted online is is what you're seeing uh, from us. Or that you're seeing what, what what we're seeing and what we're receiving. Um, you know, anytime a, an email or a correspondence is sent to uh, the planning commission email, uh, it, it goes into our personal email boxes. So you know, we see everything and, and all that gets posted. Um, I you know, beyond that, I'm not sure how to answer the question. No, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'll spend some time to look at the emails that are posted on the uh, the website. So I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate all the time that you guys have spent on this, and um, that's all for me. I'll turn it over to Kristen. No, I um, I agree with everything Tyler said, and kind of wanted to echo what our, my neighbor said. We appreciate everything, um, and kind of I know we've met multiple times in the past year, um, and I mean. Tyler and I moved to Grandview in 2019, looked for a house here, and um, and we did look up. We we looked up the fact that there could be development in our backyard, and we were okay with that. We were okay with development um, as long as it followed the code, and we did look at that code. And, and from our understanding, it was 35 feet. Um, we understood that, and again, we're okay with it, and the fact um, – that and we accepted it, but we didn't. What we weren't accepting was a 50 foot building um, of huge, huge height, huge scale in our backyard. Um, I mean, I appreciate the sight lines that he had done, but we also took some pictures from our backyard and from our two story window. And what wasn't necessarily addressed from those sight lines is the fact that we all have living space behind our garages. It's not as if we live in our driveways. We live, I mean, I have an entire yard fenced in in my backyard that I go out in all the time. I have a garden in, I have, um, I plan to raise a family in, and I don't, I, ne I never expected to have a 
towering building in my backyard with balconies looking over into that into that yard. So, I, I mean, the sight lines were appreciated, but they weren't necessarily representative of what we're seeing from our houses. Um, that was just, just kind of one point I wanted to address, but otherwise, um, I do appreciate all of your guys' feedback. Um, and we, again, are, are opposed to the development as it is, as it stands now. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Uh, uh, Gregory Demara, I'm uh, sorry, Di Maria, are you, are you online? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm hi. My name is Greg Di Maria. I live at 1226 Broadview Avenue. Um, speaking on behalf of myself and my wife, um, I just wanted to express some of the same concerns that everyone else has mentioned. Just the if you look at the sightline pictures that they display, just how big this building is. It's just. just uncharacteristic of the Grandview Avenue and what is there today with like the bank block and everything. Um, I just think it's too much. Um, I do love uh, uh, the comment about potentially eliminating the second or third floor. I think if that were to occur, I, I think all op opposition would go away. So those are my main thoughts with it. I just think it's too much. It's too big. It's just enormous. And I, I just want, I, I support development. I just think this is just too much. They're trying to do too much with this plot of land. So that's all I have. I appreciate um, everyone's time tonight. I appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to speak. So thank you. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Amy Stevens, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. All right, go ahead. I'm Amy Stevens. I live at 1248 Grandview Avenue, and I'm representing my um, self and my husband and my daughter. Uh, and I am going to speak um, in support of the development. So I, I realize I'm a minority opinion here tonight. Um, I look out my living room window, which is now my home office window at the, the properties. And um, they, they have not been very well maintained and are not very visually appealing. So any improvement um, to the current site would be very much appreciated from our perspective, um, from where we sit. Um, another point I just wanna make is that um, I strongly support increased density in Grandview. Um, higher density housing is more efficient for city services as a land Lock City, it makes sense for us to build vertically to increase our property tax base. Um, in addition, the proposed development would increase the vibrant pedestrian friendly nature of the area. It's located on two CODA bus lines. Um, and I think that um, the proposed project is within the character of um, that part of Grandview Avenue. Um, and I think um, density does need to be somewhat big. Um, and so I, I, th I think it makes sense. Um, and the third point that I want to make, um, and, I, and I, I don't know how relevant it is um, in this discussion, but I, I think it's very important, is that I think we really need more affordable housing in Grandview. Um, I really think we should be looking at inclusionary zoning. Um, if there's any way to um, have inclusionary zoning to apply to a project on this site. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I think moving forward, we need, to, we need to look for other sites in the city where we can have dense, more affordable housing. And I'm just very concerned that um, these strong, strong resistance to any dense housing will dampen interest. Um, in, in other projects around the city that might be more affordable. So overall, I'm just very interested in what we can do to work together um, to make sure that Grandview is more dense, vibrant, welcoming, affordable, and equitable. And thank you for giving me the time to share my um, differing opinion. Thank you, Amy, I appreciate it. Um, all right, I'll turn this back to commission members. Um, any additional thoughts or, or comments um, before we talk about, you know, the, the 
potential legislation or potential uh, application. All right. Yeah. So, Pardon me. you know, from what Hello? I was hearing, oh. Hi, this is Laura McDermott at 1254 Broadview, and we had uh, requested to speak as well. State your name again. Uh, Laura McDermott um, at 1254 Broadview. Okay. So we just wanted to echo the sentiments of many of the folks on the phone tonight that the mass and scale continues to be the main concern for us as the neighbors behind the uh, the Drexel Theater, that it is going to add to congestion to the skyline. It's going to just not accommodate the feel and the vibe that we want to have for the community. It is uh, not that we're against development, it's that we want to have a development that is more in character and suitable for the position and the space that we're looking at. So we appreciate your time and my husband Tim wants to speak as well. Hi, thank you so much for your leadership and thank you very much for your patience um, as we go over two and a half hours on this meeting. Um, my wife and I are 25 year residents of Grandview and We've always known that there's going to be development of those two houses back there. And in fact, I, I knew the original owners from way back when. The, the, the city of Grandview has a tremendous opportunity here, and it, it's not really going to come again. So it needs to be made intentionally. We have the opportunity to build on the bank block and expand one of the best parts of Grandview. And, and that opportunity, um, is manifested with how many people are passionate about this. I don't feel like this development fits in this space. We have other places in Grandview where this sort of development would fit in, in terms of the character of it, the size of it, and the density of it, in terms of Grandview Yard, Grandview Crossing, or Goodale Boulevard. Um, I think that making a wise choice to build on the opportunity that we have here to expand the bank block in terms of the character of the buildings that are in place um, should not be passed up. And, and so I greatly appreciate you all taking as much time and as much thought as you're doing um, to make sure that that right choice is made. Thank you. All right, thank you for comments. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, commission members. So, you know, I'll go back to, to some of the comments that you made previously that, you know, there are some things you, you, you definitely support uh, in this application. There's some things that, that maybe you have some, some additional questions on or, or um, you know, you want some additional consideration. So I, I guess, and this might be a question for staff and, 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 and Joel, maybe even you for to chime in. Um, you know, I'm looking at this and thinking it's either you know, do we vote on on, on the major site plan review, and, and then consider other the the other parts of this, or um, you know, I, but you know, I guess it, at the end of the end of the meeting, it's up to the commission members and and what they want to propose. But staff have any thoughts or? Input there. Uh, uh, this is Charlie Beauchene. The staff would say that you know the major component of this is the the first uh, item, which is the site uh, plan review. And obviously, if if you uh, turn that down, uh, the other issues. I don't know if if the uh, applicant wants us to to vote on that. That's what I'm thinking as well. Um, Mr. Crossley, what, what, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, you know, we, we, we take a run at the major site plan review and then, and then go from there. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, you know, the, the feedback of uh, planning commission uh, tonight uh, is quite clear and um, we're um, we're in a position um, that you know we've spent 18 months uh, coming back to this commission uh, four times 
Uh, every time we've come back, we've made concessions, we've made major changes. Uh, we've spent a lot of time and money on these plans. Um, this really is our uh, is our uh, presentation and package. Uh, you know, I'm disappointed to hear the feedback that we we still haven't hit the moving target uh, that's presented to us at every meeting. Um, still disappointed that the focus is not on the overlay, uh, which is the city's vision and code, and, and there just seems to be um, uh, you know, a willingness to look past the overlay um, uh, as we have we have such vocal feedback. Um, you know, from from four or six or ten neighbors who are immediately adjacent. This, and, um, you know, it's it, it's a misstatement to say that the neighbors withstanding do not support this project. Mr. Myers and Mr. Fordhofer, who are both the most impacted by this proposal, both support this proposal. Um, they are immediately adjacent on either side. Uh, the residential neighbors behind uh, have a 25 foot setback on our property and then a setback on their own property. They are less impacted. Uh, they bought properties uh, after the overlay was enacted, and you know, I, I don't need to repeat myself. I, you know, it, it, it seems quite clear the, the direction this is headed. Um, we'll, we are prepared uh, to ask for a vote, and if, if it doesn't go our favor, um, you know, we we all have have options. And uh, you know, I, I will say it, it, this is such a disappointment. You know, the Salzgabers built these homes in 1900 and 1915, and they have not changed hands since a year ago when we bought them. This is a 100-year opportunity, a 100-year opportunity for the city to execute on its vision in the overlay. And if this board chooses not to execute on that vision, the opportunity is lost forever. And, and that's really unfortunate because I'm a resident. Uh, you know, this is, this is not a money grab. This, this is a passionate project for us. And, and we were proud to present it. And, and obviously you don't see the same vision uh, that, that we do uh, for this site. Uh, we, we have flipped this building every which way uh, uh, and back, back again. Uh, we, have, we have hired some of the most talented architects uh, in our city and they happen to be Grandview uh, you know, business owners as well. So, so you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know what else uh, we, we can do for this board. I, I am very disappointed. I, I think this board is gonna have to answer to our business owners up and down the strip who have supported us and who want this. Uh, you know, this our, our strip needs this type of redevelopment and energy. And, and I am honestly telling you under oath that economically this project does not work with any less units. We started out 18 months ago with 29 units. We now have 22. The building is shrunk. Uh, you know, we, we don't get credit for that, but every time it, it, has, it, it, it has significantly shrunk. We pulled it back 25 feet in the rear on all three stories. Um, we, we've, uh, all of the changes that we've made have been significant. And, and, and so you know, if it doesn't meet with, with the vision uh, you know, uh, to collect five votes from this board, that, that's really disappointing. Uh, you know, we own the site, so we're gonna have to make a decision. Do, do we fix up the houses and sell them? Uh, I don't know. Do, do we rent the houses and, and, and wait 10 or 20 years? I don't know. You, you instructed me at the very first meeting to go back to Mr. Myers and back to Mr. Fordhofer, and I did that 20 plus times. And I got Mr. Myers' agreement and I got Mr. Fordhofer's uh, you know, consent to our plan. No other person or business or developer is ever going to assemble these four parcels the way I have. And uh, you know, Mr. Myers is gonna be the most disappointed. I hope you'll each call him tomorrow. Uh, because he he was he was tremendously excited at this opportunity to fix a condition on his property that's existed since 1972. Um, yeah. you know, the, the, the staff report provides a roadmap for approval, and we would ask for your vote of approval. That's all I have to say. I, I really appreciate it. You said yourself, this is a 100-year opportunity. We need to have a high bar. I'm sorry if if this proposal you know, elicit some feedback that isn't favorable, but this is a very, very important part of Grandview Avenue. Everything you're saying is exactly how we feel. We want to see the best thing happen for that property as well. So I appreciate the passion. I really hope it stays with you and and, and we can see something that, that, that everyone can get excited about. I appreciate it. Commission members, um, I entertain a motion.
I guess I, I can make a motion, but just to be clear, am I going to make a motion for the entire case or I guess I'm just going to make a friend our case, right? I, I mean, I would make it for the major site plan review item A. Okay. Um, so motion to approve planning commission case 10 2019. Um, for the request of major site plan review. Is there a second? All second. Okay. Commissioner Labeo? Uh, no. Commissioner Rourke? No. No. Commissioner Kelly? No. Commissioner Wondell? I want to make a comment first. Um, it is true that a developer has been before us with a proposal that he wants to do. It was he. Uh, it wasn't approved. And he put the commission in a position of waiting another 50 years before something could be done. I think it's possible for, for Mr. Crosley to do that again. I would hope he wouldn't. I would hope he would honestly look at what we talked about and see if it wouldn't be possible to do something that could eventually, not presently, but eventually include other properties on, on Grandview Avenue. So with that understanding and that awareness, I vote no. Chairman Gentry? No. Okay. Disapproved. All right. Um, again, Caroline's time, efforts, investment on this project. Go. We hope we see you again. And um, thank you. I don't, there's nothing else to come for the commission. Return.